Yes, you, I'm here. Thank you. What's the weather like? Um, well, it's only 6 a.m., so the sun is not up yet, so I'm not sure. But okay. it should be about 20 today. Oh, my heavens. We're suffering up here <laughs> in the cold. I think you've been having some pretty good weather. It was great weather yesterday for the uh, eclipse. I know. We didn't get to see okay. the eclipse down here. Okay. All right. Start start the meeting. So first of all, we acknowledged we acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq First Nation. Call to order. Number two, declarations of conflict of interest. Any declarations? Okay. On the agenda, we have previous minutes, draft minutes, the reports. Need someone to move the agenda? Moved by Councillor Ramsey, second by Councillor McKinnon. All those in favor? Deputy, yay or nay? In favor. Okay. So you have the number four adoption of previous draft minutes. Regular meeting March 12th, 2024. Public planning meeting March 11th, 2024. Special meetings, mostly for budget purposes, March 11, March 13th, 18th, 26, 28. Did I forget one? No. So I need someone to move those minutes. Moved by Councillor Beck, second by Councillor McKinnon. All those in favor? Okay. Deputy, yay or nay? In, in favor. Business arising out of the minutes. Business arising. Okay. So, yes, go ahead, sir. You're looking at what? Oh, what minutes? Set of minutes, so we know. I I thought it said here uh, April second, but I don't know if that's from the planning minutes. I just took the report. It's on the STR and. Uh, uh, that would be from the planning committee. Yeah, it's not one of our meetings of regular, public, or special okay. meetings. I'll ask at the planning then. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Eleanor, is that STR issue? Was that under the standing committee for planning, development, and heritage? I think it was. Okay. Yeah, Don is not in her head, so Donna would know. Manager of Policy and Heritage. Yeah. Okay. So first report, Planning and Heritage, Deputy Mary Alana Yankoff. Now, uh, Alana is calling in. So, Alana, do you, Deputy Mary, do you want to present it or do you have the... Yeah. Okay, good. Sure. I'm good. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. So, good, e good evening, everybody, and good morning here for me. But, um, um, so the um, Planning and Heritage... Report would consist of the Design Review Board met um, on March um, and the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee met on March 19th. Copy of your minutes are included in the package. The Heritage Board met on March 25th. Planning and Heritage Committee met on April the 2nd. And the Planning Board met on April the 2nd. We have seven resolutions for your consideration as well as two first readings and three first readings, or three second readings. You'll also notice the two items that have returned for this evening would be um, the uh, application from Oak Drive, as well as you'll also see the um, proposed heritage designation for 10 Prince Street. So if you have any questions on uh, my report, I'll do my best to answer. Thank you. Councilor Drawn. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Uh, just on, on the April 2nd meeting, and there's a good explanation by staff, but I've, I've been getting a, an unusual amount of calls uh, on the $2 million liability issue. Mm -hmm. um, again, staff have, have given a great uh, explanation, but I think when council passed the, the bylaw in November, 
there wasn't a $2 million liability issue passed at that time. So I'm not sure if it was added on at a, at a later date. Uh, I, I don't think I was aware of it at the time. And I'm getting calls from like uh, people that have a one um, small STR in their house. Um, they may go to the cottage from time to time and rent, rent part of their home. And they're just a, a mom and pop organization. Um, they don't take a whole lot of money in. And the $2 million liability issue is, is causing them, you know, a, a bit of stress. And I understand, like in most houses, they have a million dollar liability. So I'm thinking, uh, could this not be looked at and adjusted for just a, a, single, a single business um, that, that has a, a low overhead? You know, if, if they're trying to make you know, a few dollars uh, come the summertime or six months of the year. I don't know if $2 million liability is, is necessary for such a, a small amount. I, I know in, in a general house, uh, your insurance has a million dollars liability. So if, if you're going to rent it out, I don't know if, if we have to go $2 million. I wonder if, if staff can, again, describe this or can it be adjusted? Thank you. Councilor Drawn, I, I'm just looking through my package. Where, where is that in the package? Does someone know what page it's on in the digital package? I can Hold on, just one sec. I don't know what page it's on. I printed it off at home. It just says report number. Page 40. Page 40. Okay, thank okay. you. Hold on just one second. I oh, don't know, page 42, sorry. Is everybody on that page 42, just to? <coughs> Your Worship. Um, just one second. Is that, is, that's, that's the March 25th meeting, correct? No, April 2nd. I have March 25th. April 2nd. There's Oh, right now. Um, just want to make sure, Rob. That was April 2nd. That was April 2nd planning and heritage meeting. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Okay, okay, I see that now. I think Wayne's at 79. Yeah, yeah it is. Okay, yeah. and that's part of the, that is part of the uh, package, I think, for affordable house. Okay, Councilor Beck. Uh, I'm in conflict on this, so sh should I? Yeah, sh both you we, and Councilor Tweel. We, we yeah. should be leaving. Yeah, so can, made it. can we address, uh, wrap this up and then I can come back in, or we can come back in? What, wrap what up? Well, if whatever the just like stay on this topic and deal with it, whatever's to be dealt with. Well, see, it, I think it's Donna. Is it part of resolution number two? That's what I'm trying to figure out. This no. This can I can I speak to the yes? Go can ahead. Can I speak to my report? Okay. So there is Which no resolution believe? for this. Um, uh, we had a discussion at the planning and heritage meeting on April the second. There ha there is no resolution. Um, this was this is in your package for information only. Um, the, um, so the only question I think I hear that Councilor Drawn has is in the short term rental licensing bylaw, yes or no, is a two million dollar liability in there? Okay. So that's the only question we need to wrap up and answer yep. from from, from Councilor Drawn at this moment. Yeah. Do you wish to defer to Donna? Donna's here. Yes, please. Donna? Thank you, Your Worship. Through you, Madam Chair. Yes, it is included in the STR licensing bylaw. In fact, it is at section 10.1 that allows for the commercial liability requirement. Councilor Dwan. Thank you. And, and I do realize it's in there. Uh, the concern is, that, is what I'm getting, is I'm getting calls about could this be adjusted? And in the explanation it says, you know, we'll look at it maybe in a year's time. But for these small operations, you know, I think one lady told me or, or a gentleman there said that it was uh, near $600 more. Um, so I, I don't know if that's true or not. I, I don't know if there's a price tag. I know there's a price tag for commercial liability. I'm just saying for smaller operators, you know, could that two million dollars be adjusted? That's that's the question. So, deputy, do you want to address that issue? 
So this was discussed in length at the um, it was at the meeting on April the second, and the recommendation um, by staff was that 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 council had just approved this bylaw in November. So the committee was not was not looking to reopen this bylaw. So really, I guess at this point, I mean, if Councillor Duran wants to put a notice of motion that he wants a bylaw reconsidered, I guess that's, I believe that's his prerogative if he chooses and wants to put back to committee. Um, I just don't know, uh, maybe maybe staff could give a little bit more direction on next steps for Councillor Duran because I, from my understanding is this was discussed in length at the um, committee meeting on April 2nd. Yeah, but just to add to that, Don, I think this is a discussion we had at the Standing Committee meeting for planning, development, and heritage. This is part of the budgetary process because your fees have to be part of your revenue. So this would have been part of the vote that we did on March 28th. Now, for the $2 million for liability, I think we keep going back to the situation in Montreal where seven uh, persons were killed in a fire in Airbnb and that the two million is is not even an upper limit, it's the minimum that's required. So could we take this back to the standing committee? And if you want to sh come to that standing committee meeting, Councillor Duran, you're more than welcome. Is that all right, Deputy? Um, so why are we taking it back to standing committee? Well, he wants to uh, bring it up, uh, bring his concern up at that committee level, and uh, we can leave it at the committee level. And if there's a okay. recommendation, Councillor Duran. Did Councillor Duran not all, did Councillor Duran not already ask this to be brought up at the standing committee, and it was discussed? So we're going to come take it back and do it again, and that's fine if that's what we're doing. I'm just trying to get some clarification here. Councillor Duran, just clarification as well. If this is the minimum then that's the minimum, right? So I can't ask to, to drop it down to a million. I, I was just wondering if there was a minimum process of a million dollars liability. But if there's not, then there's not. No. Okay? That's great. Questions answered. Thank you. Okay. So do we want to go with the first resolution? Yes, Ellen? please. Okay. And that's on. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by Deputy Mayor Yankoff, seconded by Councillor McCabe. Be it resolved that the request to accept Heritage Board's recommendation and commence the process to designate 10 Print Street, PID 336321, as a heritage resource per Section 3.3 of the Heritage Preservation Bylaw be approved. Uh, no, Councillor Tweel's in the queue. Councillor Tweel? Since I requested the legal opinion, did in fact, uh, did council have the opportunity to re read a written legal opinion concerning uh, 10 Upper Prince Street and that we can arbitrarily and unilaterally uh, designate heritage buildings in this city or what we think is a heritage building without the written authorization or consent of a property owner? Is, is that what the legal opinion, written legal opinion, is stating to all members of city council? That's my first question. I, I find that uh, did, did highly, it? highly unusual. I mean, yeah. Um, but I, 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 I would certainly like to see the written legal opinion because there is, uh, there is a, a, a disagreement amongst amongst uh, both both solicitors, solicitors representing the property owner and the uh, solicitor representing the city of Charlottetown. So that's the first question. Did the city council have an opportunity to read a written legal opinion stating that council has the authorization to unilaterally and arbitrarily designate a heritage building without the written authorization and consent of the effective property owner. Deputy, do you want to respond to that? And Don is here, or David? Um, so I can take a stab at it. There was a legal opinion. It was provided to the committee. I, I assumed that 
city, uh, the other councillors had an opportunity to read it. Um, I, I can't answer whether or not the rest of council saw it, but I know committee reviewed the, the legal opinion. A report was then provided to the standing committee, and um, it did state that um, that uh, we were that we were following process correctly, and that our bylaw does state that at any point staff can bring a recommendation to um, designate a property as a uh, heritage without the owner prompting that um, ask. And you would see that all in section 3.3.1 through down to, um, right down to I think 3.3.8. So if the staff want to follow up any more on that, they can, um, they can take it from here. Yeah. Donna? Do you want to give some background, or David? I think Donna is probably more suited because she's the manager of <coughs> policy and heritage. Thank you, Worship. Through you, Madam Chair. Yes. So the legal opinion was received from the city's solicitors, and this was discussed in a closed session of council. It was also discussed as a summary at the Heritage Board and it was also discussed at the Planning and Heritage Committee. So council um, got the information that was requested based on the deferral that was made back in 2023. And as the chair stated, per section 3.3 of the Heritage Preservation Bylaw, the heritage officer can initiate the process to designate a property as a heritage resource. You want to put a couple of questions in this second one because remember, well, okay, well, okay, well, let, let's see if we get someone else. Anyone else want to ask questions? Yeah, well, no, second question. Yeah. Okay, okay. go ahead. Um, well, I'm certainly no legal expert, but I find this uh, highly unusual that uh, it's probably even groundbreaking that uh, city council is going to designate a property without the written authorization or consent um, of, of, of an effective property owner that is strictly not in favor. I, I, I fail to see the merits of it. I, I wonder, um, you know, if, if this is challenged in Iraq or ends up down on Water Street, how successful is the city of Charlottetown going to be? What are the odds? Is it 50-50, 60-40, 70-30? What are the odds? Uh, this, is, this, is, this is all new territory, new groundbreaking uh, to me. Uh, I, 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 I've, I've just never seen anything like it. So uh, I'll not be sporting it. Uh, Councilor Bernard. Thank you, Worship. I think we had a night where we discussed this. We talked about this is the first time the city has taken a property and designated heritage, or we're looking to designate heritage, which is why we wanted to get a legal opinion, because it was the first time we treaded down, treaded, treaded water on something like this. So we got the legal opinion back. <coughs> That's why it's here. So this discussion has already been had. I think, I think the chair alluded to that. We've had a long discussion over this already. So like I say, we're just waiting for the legal opinion and we have it. So I think now it's time to vote on it. Donna, on the 500 lot area, the history of the 500 lot area, was that designated by council? Is, it has to be because it's in our bylaw, right? It is and it is yeah. stated in our Heritage Preservation Bylaw. So, and I also wanted to um, follow up on Councillor Tweel's um, question or concern, is that this resolution does not um, initiate and or to say that the property will be designated, is to commence the process to designate the property. So after this, then an intent to designate would then have to be placed on the property, and this provides the owner with an opportunity to object to this designation. No, Councillor, we have to move on. We'll take the vote. Yeah, but it, it, it will be, well, no, we'll be, no, no, if I go once, I'll go twice. Questions been called? All those in favor, please put up your hand. 
Councilors McCabe, Beck, McKinnon, Maturt, Ramsey, McLear, Bernard. Deputy Mayor, yay or nay? I'm in favor. Okay. Contrary, Councilors Tweel and Durant, eight to two. Okay, can you read the next one? <coughs> Moved by Deputy Mary Ankoff, seconded by Councillor McCabe. Be it resolved that Council approves the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee's terms of reference as attached. Questions called? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay. Deputy? In favor. Okay, thank you. 10 0. Want to read the next one? Moved by Deputy Mary Ankov, seconded by Councillor McCabe. Be it resolved that Council deny the request for major variance for 14 Oak Drive, PID 390401, to reduce the required minimum lot frontage from 18 meters, 59.1 feet, to approximately 6.09 meters, 20 feet, to allow a single detached dwelling to be constructed on the subject property. Councillor Twill. I guess what I'd like to know is uh, maybe from the chair of planning or senior administration in the planning department, tell me why planning board and planning staff management are off sides with one another. What was the, uh, what was the breaking point and why was there uh, such a separation when it comes to uh, staff making the recommendation? and planning board recommending a rejection. Could someone here outline that for me? Deputy, can I turn that over to you? And if you want to reach out to Don or David or CAO? Sure. Go ahead. Yep, yep, sure. So this was an application for a, a major variance and um, which does, does not adhere to our existing bylaw. So planning board felt that they want it to um, continue to adhere to the bylaw and not, um, so therefore they denied this request. And they really base it on, um, you know, uh, the bylaw states that a flag lot can only be approved through a frontage variance application in two situations, where an existing legal lot, lot was created with less than 25 feet of front, frontage or if the parcel is landlocked and there is no ability for the extension of a future street network. So this application didn't meet either of these criteria. So therefore, planning board um, has recommended to not support this application. Councilor Tron. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Um, I too have, have questions. Uh, you know, staff or professional planners, and, and they they say yes, this is a legal. Uh, application and uh, you know they put forth their recommendation but when it goes to planning uh, committee then planning committee flips it the other way and goes against staff uh, either way it goes it, it's probably going to end up in Iraq I, I would assume from from the parties involved so you know what what is our job you know do we go the leg legal way I guess um, you know, or or do we go the other way? You know that that's the question. What what we're we're here looking at? Planning board says deny. Staff say it's legal to go ahead. So, you know what? I guess what I'm asking the planning staff now. You know the recommendation. It's coming to uh, council to deny it, and and what does staff feel? Uh, do they feel that their decision, that, that they said it's legal, uh, is that the appropriate decision? Because if we all vote on this and either way it goes to Iraq, what are the legal ramifications here for us? You know, I, I don't want to say, okay, I'll, I'll go with one party and then when I go against the legal, you know, recommendation, then are we just wasting money? So can, can staff clarify what I'm asking? Just, I just want to go through the uh, deputy first. Deputy Mayor, do you want to add any comments, and then, if you want, if you wish. Uh, yeah, just a couple of couple of pieces of clarification for, and so uh, Councillor Duran alluded to the fact that Planning and Heritage Committee 
but it was Planning and Heritage Board, and I'm sure that was just an error in what, when he when he referred to because there are so many committees and boards in, within this department. But it was Planning and Heritage Board that um, denied staff's recommendation. This is not the first time that a that a planning board would um, go against staff's recommendation, um, especially when you are looking at um, um, going against your existing bylaw. So this. This may or may not end up at IRAC, depending on what people choose. But again, planning board has recommended that we deny this application. Planning staff have felt that they um, they they were able to support it. So tonight, it's at council for the second time after getting additional information. And I mean, if staff wants to share any more, but I uh, I can turn it over to staff if if they wish to add anything additional. David or Donna? David Gundrum? Yeah, uh, thank you, Your Worship, and through the chair, I'll, I'll just add that um, as the Deputy Mayor spoke to, this happens sometimes where planning staff and board or council may be on opposite sides, have diff a difference of opinion. Um, just in terms of how this all happened, um, planning staff arrived at an interpretation that the variance was such that we could support it through the bylaw, that the impacts were found not to be so severe that we would recommend denial on the application. However, it's a multilateral pluralistic process where the planning board has to take all the voices into consideration. Our voice is just one of those. Members of the public raised some serious concerns about this application. The planning board listened to those <laughs> residents and gave, uh, you know, gave uh, due consideration to those concerns. And I would say in this case, the planning board sided with the neighborhood which is perfectly fine. And sometimes we don't always get it right. And sometimes you do have to listen. You do always have to listen to your residents. And there are times where what the residents say really gets taken to heart during these processes. And that's what happened here. We're planning board. They, yes, they gave due consideration to our interpretation, but they also gave you know equal, if not more, consideration to what the residents had to say. And this is just one of those cases where um, they really took to heart what the residents thought and felt and had concerns for, and that's why we're, we have the recommendation before council tonight that we do, which is differs from our opinion. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Councilor Bernard. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I didn't see any real new information when we were here last month, uh, and for me, I, I guess Planning staff, I always considered the experts, and I, I understand what Councilor Duran is saying, he's probably right. Um, may end up in Iraq, but anyway, um, to me, the planning staff have been the experts. Then we sent out water and utility, and water utility looked at it and approved it. Um, Public Works went out and looked at it, Public Works approved it. So I will be voting against this resolution. I think that the flag law should be able to go. Question, Councilor Beck? Call the question. Yeah. Questions called. All those in favor of rejecting the application, in favor of rejecting it, that is, um, the council deny the request for a major variance for 14 Oak Drive. Okay. Okay. So, okay, councillors Twill, McCabe. I want to clarify. It says here the council denied the request for the major variance. All those in favor of denying the request. That's, that's, yeah, denying the, yeah. So if, if you vote in favor of it, if you vote yes, you're denying the request. If you vote against it, you're saying no to the denial. Which means if, if it's turned down, we have to take another resolution to vote in favor of the major variance. So if we reject this denial, then we have to put another resolution on the floor to accept the major variance. Is that correct, Donna? <clears throat> well, no, but to accept or approve, same thing. So if you vote yes, you're turning down the variance. That's what this resolution, the, the council deny. Got it? Uh, the this, is, this is the planning, 
This is the planning board recommendation. Staff, <coughs> staff said, get, we approve the variance. The planning board said, we deny it. So if you vote in favor of this denial, you're saying no to the variance. Okay. All those in favor of denying the request, approving the request. Okay. Twill, McCabe, Beck, Duran, McKinnon, and Matard. All those in, hmm? Well, Deputy Mayor, are you in favor or against it? I'm in favor of denying the request. Okay. Those against denied it? Seven to three. So it's denied. Okay, just one second, counselors. Counselors. Ramsey. Do you want to read the next one, please? Moved by Deputy Mary Ankoff, seconded by Councillor McCabe. Be it resolved that the request to amend Appendix C approved site-specific exemptions of the City of Charlottetown Zoning and Development Bylaw as it pertains to the property, property located at 126 uh, Rochford Street, a PID 345744 in the downtown neighborhood DN zone in order to allow for an office use, law office, as a principal main use on the subject property, whereas an office use is only permitted as a home occupation accessory to a permitted principal use in the DN zone, be approved to proceed to public consultation. Okay, this is just going to public consultation. Questions call. All those in favor going to public consultation. <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Yankoff, yay or nay? In favor. 10 0. Okay, read the next one, please. Moved by Deputy Mary Ankoff, seconded by Councillor McCabe. Be it resolved that Council approve the request to amend Appendix A, the official plan future land use land use map of the city of Charlottetown from institutional medium density residential and low density residential to comprehensive planning area and to amend Appendix G, zoning map of the Charlottetown Zoning and Development Bylaw from low density residential single zone, R2S, medium density mixed use residential zone, MUR, and institutional zone, I, to the comprehensive uh, development area zone, CDA, as well as amend Appendix B, comprehensive development area, CDA, parcels and permitted uses, and amend Appendix I, uh, bylaw revision history of this, of Charlottetown Zoning and Development Bylaw as it pertains to properties identified as PID 192252 and PID 422642 to permit the future development of a master plan community on the subject properties that would include a total range of 1,211 to 1,476 dwelling units, including a mix of single detached, duplex, townhome, and multi-unit residential dwellings. Pretty easy one. Question? Question's called. All those in favor? Deputy Mayor, Yank, Yankoff? In favor. Okay. Next one, please. Moved by Deputy Mayor Yankoff, seconded by Councillor McCabe. Be it resolved that Council approve the request to amend Appendix A, the official future land use map of the City of Charlottetown, from institutional to comprehensive planning area, and to amend Appendix G, zoning map of the Charlottetown Zoning and Development Bylaw, from institutional zone I, to the comprehensive development area zone CDA, as well as amend Appendix B, comprehensive development area, CDA parcels and permitted uses, and, append and amend Appendix I. Bylaw revision, history of the Charlottetown Zoning and Development Bylaw, as it pertains to the property identified as 503 University Avenue, PID 374140, to permit the future development of an eight-story, stepping back to six-story, 257-unit residential apartment building on the subject property. Questions called? Easy one. All in favor? Deputy Mayor, Yankoff, yay or nay? 
In in favor. Okay. Ten zero. Okay. Moved by Deputy Mary Ankoff, seconded by Councillor McCabe. Be it resolved that the request for the con consolidation of the identified properties municipally addressed as 450, 460, 466, and 470 Melpec Road, PIDs 134999, 134981, 135004, and 744961 be approved subject to a pinned final survey plan and a new perimeter deed description being registered to describe the outer boundaries of the consolidated parcels. Okay, this will allow 84 affordable units to go ahead. Question called? All those in favor? Deputy Mayor Yankov? In favor. Now, do you have some second readings? Yep. Ready? Thank you. Uh, official plan to adopt official plan amendment PH-OPA-1.042 to amend Appendix A, the official plan future land use map of the City of Charlottetown from institutional, medium density residential and low density residential to comprehensive planning area to permit the future development of a master plan community on the subject properties PIDs 192252 <coughs> and 422642 that would include a total range of 1,211 to 1,476 dwelling units, including a mix of single detached, duplex, townhome, and multi-use residential dwellings. Be it resolved that the official plan amendment, PHOPA.1-042, uh, as it pertains to the subject properties, identified as PIDs 192252 and 422642 as attached be adopted. Moved by Deputy Mary Yankoff, seconded by Councillor McCabe. Shall it carry? <sighs> Deputy Mary, yay or nay? Yeah, okay, um, carry. Okay, okay, 10 zero. To adopt bylaw PH-ZD.2-080, a bylaw to amend the zoning and development bylaw, to amend Appendix G, zoning map of the Charlottetown zoning and development bylaw from low density residential uh, single zone, R2S, medium density mixed use residential zone, MUR, and institutional zone, I, to the comprehensive development area zone, CDA, for the subject properties identified as PIDs 192252 and 422642 to permit uh, the future development of a master plan community on the subject properties that would include a total range of 1,211 to 1,476 dwelling units, including a mix of single detached duplex, townhome, and multi-unit residential dwellings. Bylaw PH-ZD.2-080, a bylaw to amend the zoning and development bylaw, would also amend Appendix B, Comprehensive Development Area, CDA, and Appendix I, bylaw revision history of the Charlottetown zoning and development bylaw. Be it resolved that the bylaw to amend the City of Charlottetown zoning and development bylaw, PH-ZD.2-080, as it pertains to the properties identified as PIDs 192252 and 422642, as attached, be read a first time and approved, and be read a second time at the next public meeting of council. Moved by Deputy Mayor Yankoff, seconded by Councillor McCabe. Shall I, Gary? Pass. Pass. Deputy Mayor Yankoff, yay or nay? Pass. Okay. Pass. Okay. Got another one there? To adopt official plan amendment PH-OPA-1.043 to amend Appendix A, the official plan future land use map of the City of Charlottetown from institutional to comprehensive planning area for the subject property identified as 503 University Avenue, PID 374140, to permit the future development of an eight-story, stepping back to six-story, 257-unit residential apartment building. Be it resolved that the official plan amendment PH-OPA.1-043 as it pertains to the subject properties identified as PID 374140 as attached be adopted. Moved by Deputy Mayor Yankoff, seconded by Councillor McCabe. Shall I carry? Deputy Mayor Yankoff? Yes, carry. Carry. Okay. Councillor Grant, do you have a question? Go ahead. 
conflict of one of these readings, right? Um, which one is it? Uh, it's on page 270. No, it's on page 270. Mm -hmm. It says, I'm in conflict, and Trevor McKinnon said no. That's coming up. That's coming up. Yeah, the second read. Yeah, yeah. We're not there yet. Okay, we're not there yet. I just wanted to say I'm, I'm in contact. So did you hear 421 St. Peter's Road? Go out that side door. No, you can't. No, Malpec Road. Malpec. Is Malpec. Is it Malpec? I was listening to the numbers. And I, was, I was waiting to t page 270, I, I was right? having a hard time following things. So. Yeah, well. Maybe we can remove them out after the fact as a conflict if that was done in the air. I don't think I have a, the Malpec Road one would have been in the resolutions. I didn't think it was, it's, it's the second read. Resolution number seven, right? No, it says first. No, second read. It's the second read. Oh no, that's, um, we're not there yet. Yeah, I'm just getting nervous, I didn't know the this number. This one, right? one more. Okay. And then Diverse the opinions, that's great. Know. You're all right. When you hear it, Thanks. leave. <laughs> Thank you, Eleanor, for taking care of that. Can you read that? Okay. Want to drink of water? <laughs> to adopt bylaw PH-ZD.2-081, a bylaw to amend the zoning and development bylaw to amend Appendix G zoning map of the Charlottetown zoning and development bylaw from institutional zone I to the comprehensive development area zone CDA for the subject property identified as PID 374140 to permit the future development of an eight story stepping back to six story 257 unit residential apartment building by law PH ZD.2 081. A bylaw to amend the zoning and development bylaw would also amend Appendix B, Comprehensive Development Area CDA, and Appendix I. Bylaw revision history of the Charlottetown Zoning and Development Bylaw. Be it resolved that the bylaw to amend the City of Charlottetown <coughs> Zoning and Development Bylaw PH-ZD.2-081 as it pertains to the property identified as 503 University Avenue, PID 374140, as attached be read a first time and approved and that it be read a second time at the next public meeting of council. Moved by Deputy Mary Ankoff, seconded by Councillor McCabe. No one's in conflict. Shall I carry? Pass. Deputy Mary Ankoff? Pass. Okay. To adopt bylaw PH-ZD.2-076, a bylaw to amend the zoning and development bylaw to permit a site-specific exemption to the existing zoning that applies to the subject property located at 421 St. Peter's Road, PID 464586, in a permit uh, to permit a double lane drive-through as, per as a permitted land use within the low density residential zone, R2, on the subject property with respect to an established coffee shop use located on an abutting parcel, PID 192187. Whereas the bylaw to amend the City of Charlottetown Zoning and Development Bylaw, PH-ZD.2-076, as it pertains to 421 St. Peter's Road, PID 464586, as attached, was read and approved a first time on March 12, 2024. Be it resolved that said bylaw be read a second time and approved. Moved by Councillor McCabe, seconded by Deputy Mary Ankoff. CEO Eleanor, is a second reading? Second reading doesn't permit any debate, right? It was only the first reading. Councilor Twill, you can't ask a question. Can I, uh, no, you can't. Is a point of order? No, no not I, because it's second reading. No, no point of order. No, there's no debate. What? I rule on the. I on just the, want to the, ask a question. You can't ask a question because it is second reading. That's, <coughs> that's the rules. Okay, question called. Shall I carry? You against? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Deputy Mary Yankoff, yay or nay? Yay. Okay, A2. Be it? Yeah. it resolved that said bylaw be adopted. Moved by Councillor McCabe, seconded by Deputy Mary Ankoff. Shall I carry? Uh, no. Okay, no. No. This no. The same one. Same one, same one. Yeah, A2. So, Deputy, Ma Deputy Mary Ankoff? Pass. Pass. That was what we had.
had two votes on second reading. Because the other one is just to verify it. Councilors to run? Sorry, no, no, Councilor Twill, we're moving on. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it's it later. Two votes in second reading? Yeah. Second reading, as you know, being a councilor here for 30 years, right. it used to be third reading, right. it's now second reading. On the third reading, you were never, so there was no debate. The second reading, there's two votes? No. There are two votes, just to confirm, but it's second reading. It doesn't matter if it's two votes, three votes, it's second reading. There's no debate. I, the rules are the rules. I didn't realize you had okay. two votes for second yeah. reading. We always do. Do we have any other second readings? Councillor Duran is ready to go if he has to. He's in conflict. Yes. We want to stay legal here. To adopt bylaw PH-ZD.2-077, a bylaw to amend the zoning and development bylaw to rezone the subject property, property located at Malpec Road, PID 104-7562 from low density residential single zone uh, R2S to apartment residential zone R4. Whereas the bylaw to amend the City of Charlottetown Zoning and Development Bylaw, PH-ZD.2-077, as it pertains to Malpec Road, PID 104-7562, as attached, was read and approved the first time on March 12, 2024. Be it resolved that said bylaw be read a second time and approved, moved by Councillor McCabe, seconded by Deputy Mary Ankoff. So for the public record, Councillor Duran has left the meeting because he's in conflict, so I just want to put that in the public record. This is the second meeting. Shall it carry? Yes. Deputy Mary Ankoff, ye or nay? 9 0. 8. Oh, you're against. Okay. Contrary? 8 1. Be it resolved that said bylaw be adopted, moved by Councillor McCabe, seconded by Deputy Mary Ankoff. Okay. Eight, one. And. Just a question. How come there wasn't two votes there? We did. Councillor. Okay. Oppose. Can someone get uh, Councillor Duran? Councillor Duran. In conflict. Got another one there? Okay. Yes? To adopt bylaw PH-ZD.2-079, a bylaw to amend the zoning and development bylaw to provide a site-specific exemption for the subject property identified as 199 Grafton Street, 156 Prince Street, PID 342790, to permit an eight-story apartment building on the subject property having 158 dwelling units, included, including 32 affordable housing units, by amending Appendix C, approve site-specific exemptions as per Section 3.11, site-specific exemptions of the Zoning and Development Bylaw to exempt 199 Grafton Street, 156 Prince Street, PID 342790 from certain provisions of Section 30.2, regulations for permitted uses in the downtown mixed-use neighborhood, DMUN zone, and Section 30.3, bonus heights development standards in the downtown mixed-use neighborhood zone, uh, exceeding maximum bonus height of 18.5 meters, 60.7 feet, as required by section 30.3.2A of the Zoning and Development Bylaw, to allow for a total maximum building height of 26.8 meters, 88 feet, with a total height above bonus height to be 8.3 meters, 27.3 feet, and to not step back the portion above the base building that is a bonus in height along a 45 degree angular plane originating from the top of the flank or rear facade of the base building that faces abutting residential dwellings or within a downtown neighborhood uh, DN zone in order to allow an eight story 158 unit apartment building including 32 affordable units with parking located within and under the building to be constructed on the subject property. 
Be it resolved that the bylaw to amend the City of Charlottetown Zoning and Development Bylaw, PH-ZD-079, uh, as it pertains to 199 Grafton Street, 156 Prince Street, as attached, be read a, a first time. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so lost in this now. Where are we in this one, Tracy? Down at this one again. Or this one. Because he's got this yeah, already no, voted here. Second. You read, you just read that and then you read this part here. Thank you. Your notes threw me off. Okay. Or blame it on me. I will. <laughs> uh, whereas the bylaw to amend the City of Charlottetown Zoning and Development Bylaw, PH-ZD.2-079, as it pertains to 199 Grafton Street, 156 Prince Street, PID 342790, as attached, was read and approved the first time on March 26, 2024. Be it resolved that the said bylaw be read a second time and approved. Moved by Councillor McCabe, seconded by Councillor Beck. Shall I carry? Pass. Good. Deputy Mayor? You have a second part. Pass. Pass. What's the second part? The second part is, be it resolved that said bylaw be adopted. And if they're okay with it, move by Councillor McCabe and seconded by Councillor Beck. Yeah. Shall I pass? Pass. pass. Okay, 10-0. Where do we sign it? Right down here. Okay. Okay. That's it, uh, Deputy Mary Yankov. Thank you very much. That's it. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. You may have to turn up your volume. We can't hear you. Is, Is that, that any better? Because it's That's at max. You know, loud, loud and clear. Yeah. Houston, okay, we can hear perfect. you. Perfect. Thank you, okay. Your Worship. Let's okay. go to six two finance auditing tender administration. Councilor McAleer. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Um, the finance audit and tender committee uh, did not meet since uh, our last regular council meeting. And uh, obviously, as a result, there's no resolutions for council's consideration. Um, and um, just uh, our, our finance committee is scheduled to meet tomorrow at, uh, at 3.30. And with the uh, compression of getting um, the budget and, and that done, the staff um, in talking with Betty, just um, Betty, Betty French, our finance manager, that um, thought it was uh, a very short window from finishing up the budget to have uh, have the committee meet so I uh, apologize for the absence of, uh, of a report but um, like I said we'll um, answer any questions if there are any in the absence of that then um, we uh, look forward to uh, our committee meeting uh, tomorrow at 3.30 thank you Council Bernard thank you your worship um, and Council McAleer, again, congratulations on a budget that uh, provides all the services we provide and no tax increase. Um, just the one question I do have, just wondering, uh, when can we expect a, a detailed budget? Oh. Detailed budget book, sorry. We usually get a detailed budget book after, after the budget's been passed. I'm just wondering when, you may, when we may get that. That's a, that's a question I, I've been asking, uh, Council Bernard. That's a question I've been asking. Yes. <laughs> Councilor McAleer. Uh, yes, uh, thank you uh, for that, uh, Councilor Bernard. And I believe um, that what you're referring to is kind of there's a tabbed uh, uh, part of that that, uh, yeah, 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 no. Yeah, no, there was, uh, there was uh, talk of that yesterday. And I will um, maybe ask the asked our CFO, uh, Dan, Dan Jenkins, to um, tell us where, where we are with that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, through the Chair, Councillor Bernard. Um, 
So we will uh, undertake to uh, collect the, the information. The, the numbers are there uh, in terms of the approved budget lines, but what's missing is some of the, the narrative in terms of descriptions of positions and who received grants and that type of thing. So um, it is going to be an, an additional ask of the departments to, to uh, provide that information. So we'll get that ask out as soon as we can and, uh, and get it back to council um, at, at the first opportunity. Yes, trail. Budget deliberations. Uh, when I read the story in the Guardian, uh, written by Logan uh, McLean, no tax increase. I understand the tax rate didn't increase, but still property assessments still go up, and, and as you can recall. I raised the issue back uh, early in the budget deliberations about freezing the property assessments. So I think we have to be careful uh, when we say there's no tax increase. Property assessments still do go up on an annual basis. So I just wanted to, to clarify that. And uh, maybe in future years we will consider uh, freezing the property assessments because of the uh, growing concerns amongst our, our residents. Uh, cost of living has gone up. It's gone through the roof. Whether it's property assessments, property uh, cost of oil, food, uh, travel, uh, it's people are having a difficult time. They're having a very difficult time. I, I thought maybe freezing the property assessments would have been, uh, you know, let the residents know we're thinking about them. This would have went a long way. I just wanted to bring that up. Okay, Councilor Ron. Thank you, Mayor Brown, and, and I'm just going back to, I mean, <coughs> Councillor McAleer doesn't have a report, but, you know, we had asked the last, this would be the second month, about a legal opinion if you're allowed to ask uh, questions. So, you know, did that come back or, you know, I know we're asking Councillor McAleer questions and it, it's not in the minutes because there's no minutes, so did that come back that you're allowed to ask? Last questions that are not in the in the report, and, and both councillors referred to no tax increases. Unfortunately, you know I have to say that that water went up, right? So that's part of the tax thing too, right? So that's rate. Beg your pardon. That's a rate. So that's not a tax increase. People say it, it's Just a rate. Just a rate increase. Yeah. So that doesn't qualify. Okay, thank you. Okay, Councillor Bernard. Thank you, Your So I just want to clarify that the city of Charlottetown has a tax rate that they charge for property tax. The assessments are controlled by the province. And yes, the assessments have been going up, property values, which, which helps us stabilize the tax rate. <coughs> if you look at Halifax, Halifax is raising their tax rate by six cents per hundred dollars of assessment. We are not, and we have not. <coughs> That's the difference. You still have your assessments go up, but if you can maintain your tax rate, then that's a good thing. So you, if you look, look across the water at Halifax, yep. Their assessments have always been going up and have gone up. The municipality raised taxes. It's always good when you can keep the taxes at the, that rate. And we have kept the taxes at least uh, the same rate for 22, 23 years. I know some tax rates have gone down. I know in the mini homes, mini home parks, they have gone down, I think in 06, 07. Um, but I think that's what's important. What we can control, and what we can control is the tax rate. And that's what. I'm saying by any time you get a budget you can pass without raising the taxes and yet provide the services, it's a good thing. So, thank you. Councillor Bernard, I, I think we dropped the mill rate from 69 cents to 67 cents in 2004. The mill rate. It's called the mill rate. It's, it's, it combines with the property tax from the province. That's how we get our total tax uh, collection. Councillor Twill. Uh, you know, you can cut the cards whatever way you want. Property assessments do go up. And I, I recall one year where the province did freeze the property assessments. This was back, oh, maybe 12, 15 years ago. So it's, it's, this is not precedent setting what, what I'm stating. And, and maybe uh, I can ask the chair to... Uh, Maybe, maybe it's time to do some kind of a, a synopsis, a study 
uh, about our property assessments compared to other jurisdictions, uh, whether it be in the Maritimes or across Canada, municipalities our size, um, to see uh, service delivery, how that all matches up. But uh, the reason why I raised the freeze and property assessments, it's not an unreasonable request. It's, it's, these are difficult times. And property assessments do go up. And you know, some people refer to it as a tax. I'm reminded, uh, you know, sometimes twice a week from uh, property owners, you know, my, my, my assessments still keep going up. That's why I suggested putting the freeze. Yes, we haven't increased the, the, the tax rate, but the property assessments, for all intents and purposes, it is a tax, and it keeps going up and going up and going up. And that's something I think we need to look at. Thank you. Councilor McLear. No, Mayor Brown, just uh, want to uh, thank Terry Bernard for speaking for me, preempted uh, what I kind of wanted to share in terms of Councilor Tweel's uh, comments, concerns. Um, and, you know, as Councilor Tweel, as for your, you know, um, lobby to, you know, have these assessments uh, um, um, uh, for frozen or whatever, um, as, you know, as uh, Councilor Bernard said, I mean, it's uh, kind of jurisdiction of the province and not to, you know, to pass that off. But it's, uh, you know, uh, the reality is our tax rate hasn't changed. Um, and, uh, you know, to, uh, to consider a freezing, absolutely, would, you know, I'm sure it would be well received. But um, that's got to be balanced with uh, the pressures and the needs uh, of, uh, of the city, which are going forward, which are huge, you know, capital projects and uh, parks and rec and police and fire. So um, it's... Um, it's uh, you know it's you know you know it's a balance and um, and uh, and with the budget we you know we passed I understand it uh, to be said and it uh, makes sense to me any budget you can pass where you don't have a uh, an increase in your tax rate is uh, uh, you know hopefully a good budget so thank you okay thank you human resources. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the Human Resource Committee has not met since our last uh, meeting, so I, there is nothing to report today, and therefore no resolutions passed as well. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we got uh, Council Ramsey, top cop. Protective and Emergency Services, Standing Committee Chair, Council Ramsey. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. We, uh, uh, Protective and Services Committee met March 20th, March 21st, and what was omitted was April 3rd. We met again last week. And uh, the minutes are in your package. There are no resolutions, and if anyone has any questions, the fire chief and the police chief and myself are here, and we're willing to answer. Thank you. Okay, Councilman McCabe. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you for your report, Councillor Ramsey. I actually watched a little bit of your meeting online to try and follow. I had noticed the e-scooter business was up for discussion again, and I just wanted to try and really fully understand what was going to happen. I noticed in the minutes it talks about uh, clarifying that you know the um, Highway Act imp implements the regulation for the rider and not necessarily the company, and I think that's probably why there was discussion within our department. Um, and I know in, in part I noticed our chief had recommended looking at developing some sort of a bylaw for this business within our city, looking at operation hours and um, enforcement on like helmets, where they can travel, who can rent, who can't rent. But I wasn't clear if there was a decision made at the end of that meeting, is that something that's still being planned? And if that is, I also noticed when we get to economic development, and this is more just for, for getting it all out because it's the same topic, they're also meeting because of the business aspect. And I would really like to see all these people come together and present something on these kind of things versus having to hear separate committees talk about separate pieces when we're talking about the same thing in the end. And that's that we certainly want to support business in our downtown core, but we want to make sure that people are safe and that... Um, I am a little distractible. I feel like a squirrel. Um, anyway, I, I lost my train of thought because everybody but I would like to know, I guess my question for you at this point is, are we actually looking to develop some sort of a bylaw around 
electric uses in our city and also then are we going to come together with economic development and look at one stop presentation. Councilor Ramsey. Thank you for your questions Councilor McCabe. Yes and that was one of our last ditch efforts we had our meeting last week with the owner of the e-scooters for example he's very uh, he like he's very corporate we had constable dale johnson in that's his file but when it came to economic development it was just to set up the business and then it was shifted over to police because that was their file it's an operational thing right now taff is young gentleman's name he's very willing to work with us every change that was brought in by mm -hmm. the police he worked with them. So this year it's going to status quo. He can run his business and uh, other people. And what we're going to be doing is we are with senior management working on a bylaw and make sure that everything, everybody is safe and how much are there for a reason, for example, and speeding and going through stop signs, the whole nine yards. So that was all brought up at the meeting this past Wednesday, I believe. And uh, so we are looking forward to that. Thank you. Second question, Councilman. Thank you, and and, I, and that's great. The only thing that concerns me, it's like uh, you know, I know there was discussion around helmet use for people under 16 in certain areas and whatever, but it's enforcement of our bylaws because it, it, we are going to see more electronic. Um, we're looking at e-bike programs. We're looking at electronic scooters. We're looking at lots of great things, and and rules are wonderful if we have the means to support and enforce our rules. So we still have some work to be done. I know His Worship's been pushing that for six years um, around enforcement by law and, and stuff, but I just think that we have to be very conscious and clear when we're trying to do this. Councilor Toyo. Uh, Chairman Ramsey, uh, two or three months ago I had uh, maybe it was a little longer, I referenced a resolution was passed by the previous city council uh, regarding the forfeiture law. And I'll just read it again. Whereas, there is continuing concern of the existence of individuals conducting illegal activities such as selling of drugs from their residents. Whereas, there's a need to hold these individuals and the property owners accountable as to ensure the health and safety of all residents of the city of Charlottetown are protected, and in particular our youth. Whereas the Prince Edward Island is one of two provinces that have not yet enacted the civil forfeiture statutes. Therefore, be it resolved, City Council support the creation of a provincial civil forfeiture law as a means for government to seize criminals, property, and fight organized crime. And further, the city right Premier Dennis King to ask his government to create such legislation. Um, this was moved by myself, second by Don. Bob Duran, you were here, passed, passed unanimously. Uh, I remember Councilor Duran said a number of months ago, I, I think we need to have a meeting with uh, the Justice Department at the elected level, and we need to uh, lobby hard for this legislation because we still have uh, drug houses in our city that are causing a lot of grief. Drug houses that are near elementary schools, which is, is shocking and, and disturbing. So um, the paraphrase, we need to put all, all the tools we can, can in the toolkit, uh, give the Charlottetown Police Department uh, all the legislation they need and the legitim legitimacy and the validity to go in and shut these drug houses down. Um, it's, it's very troublesome for some of these affected neighborhoods. And uh, I can tell you, I was talking to some parents and they're really, really frustrated and they're really upset. So I said I would continue uh, to bring this forward. Uh, I'm not asking for an answer tonight as far as deliberation. What I'm asking, sir, would you please put this on your agenda? for the next meeting, and I do think that, you know, some elected officials meeting with the Justice Department and the Minister of Justice, uh, I think would be advantageous for the residents in this city. Thank you. Okay, Councilor Rams, you want to address that? Just take it back? Yeah, like that was not in the minutes, but anyway, uh, we will certainly put it on the agenda for our next meeting. Yeah. And uh, our police chief is 
forever working with the province on rules and regulations and what we can do. And yes, Councilor Trill, we will be discussing that. Yeah. Thank you. It, it wasn't in the report, but it was a previous resolution. That's why we let it go, because I think he wants to put back. OK. OK, Councilor McTart. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, to the chair, uh, it's my understanding that um, there was a uh, can uh, Charlottetown City Police uh, did a door-to-door -door campaign uh, in and around uh, Park Street and Beach Street uh, several weeks ago, uh, speaking to residents uh, about their concerns, uh, which is uh, was great. I witnessed that myself firsthand. Um, my question, a couple questions. So one is, did that campaign uh, extend beyond uh, Park Street, Beach Street areas like? Kenzie Road, Kent Street, Edward, and even further? Uh, and if not, is there a plan to do so? Um, and having those same discussions, I, I do feel that um, we're, we're generalizing that it is just Park Street and Beach Street generally when we have this topic, uh, but it does expand, uh, expand further than that. Um, and second of all, uh, you know, in, in, in living in that general area and, and traveling through there quite often, you know, I can say there has been an increase in uh, uh, policing in the area, uh, and I see that regularly, so I thank you for that. Uh, I would uh, strongly suggest and recommend that that continue uh, on the pace of which it's uh, occurring uh, now. Uh, the residents certainly have been speaking to me and uh, indicated that they do feel that increased presence, and again, they're requesting that that continue and not just uh, kind of upfront loaded and then as we move through uh, the program over the next year, uh, that that dissipate, you know, due to the upfront loading. So uh, that was my request. I'll put that request to uh, City Policing Services uh, to extend uh, any further door-to-door -door campaigns that may or may not have happened beyond Beach Street and Park Street. Thank you. Councilman Ramsey, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for that, Councilman Richard. Uh, two excellent points. And as far as going door-to-door, -door, that. Chief, maybe you would like to answer that. That's an operational. Like, I don't send them out there. And uh, and I heard the same reports from you, too, from people that are around there. They're very pleased to see the police around there, and they find it a little better. Like, it's never going to be perfect, but, but we are working hard at it, and, and we hope it's going to be there forever. So, Chief, maybe you would like to answer the door-to-door -door thing, if you could. Chief. Your Worship, um, Chair, certainly our focus was on the Park Street, Beach Street area for the community consultation first. Uh, um, we felt it uh, probably uh, um, best uh, making sure we had ample time to discuss with residents um, their concerns. I know myself, I spent over an hour at, at, at one residence. Um, but we know that there's migration paths and other people impacted and we'll continue with our commitment to do as much outreach and consultation as we can as as um, as we uh, move forward here. I'm, I'm happy so far um, with uh, with our our efforts in that area. I think we're, we're receiving good feedback, but I think it's not by accident. I think it's because of the due diligence that's uh, gone into it and the planning. And we certainly appreciate the residents' support uh, that have, um, you know, certainly gave us the feedback that required to put a put a solid policing plan together here to uh, get us through this uh, get us through this um, transition period. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> Parks, Recreational, Leisure Activities, Councillor Mitchell Twill, Ward Four. Package. We have a couple of resolutions for City Council's uh, consideration. A couple of weeks ago was the last day for Simmons Arena, and one of the businessmen in this city uh, decided that he would uh, rent some ice time for the community. That gentleman and businessman, uh, standout hockey player in this province, uh, Dunstan Carroll, uh, provided the ice time. Uh, Dunstan uh, was a great hockey player here in this city, and he played in North Dakota. And um, it just goes to show you that in his own small way, he, he uh, you know, he, he's always willing to give back. And I want to personally thank Dunstan Carroll and his staff for uh, providing that ice time. Um, certainly there's a lot of memories and a lot of history. Um, 
I, um, you know, at our last meeting, we talked about the Simmons Arena coming down, I think approximately 500,000. Um, a lot of our user groups are, are saying they'd like to see more ice time here in the city of Charlottetown, even with the new facility. Uh, everyone's looking forward to it. There's a lot of enthusiasm. We haven't moved ahead in terms of more ice time. So one thing I'd like to discuss with the committee, a future committee meeting, is maybe the possibility of asking Paris and maybe at the provincial and federal level for an extension. This will be discussed at the Parks and Recreation Committee meeting, asking for an extension, uh, you know, 500,000 or more to take down the facility. I think if we improved uh, or, or installed a new floor at Simmons. Might be able to get three or another two or three years out of it. But again, this would be discussed at the uh, at the uh, Parks and Recreation Committee meeting. We'd have to get approval from the other two levels of government. I know screen funding uh, based on the premise that that building would have to come down. Uh, but, you know, there's an old saying, if there's a will, there's a way. So uh, I'm going to ask our staff to put this on our uh, next committee meeting. Sure. To have that discussion, I think uh, our user groups would, community groups would welcome that opportunity. Yep. So, any questions? Any questions? Yeah, just have, a, I have some questions. Councillor McCabe wants to ask a question. Sure, sure have a, thank, okay, you thank you very much, Councillor. I, I have two questions. One's going to do with the resolution on the bike lane, and I guess I'm just going to make a comment now well, and then. Have to wait till the resolution Oh, I can come back up and ask again then. So, yeah, I do have another question. Thank you. In Thank your you. minutes, when your senior advisory minutes, it was. Uh, it looks like they're doing some really great work on that advisory board. One thing I noticed is I know we've always looked at how we can best support our seniors and and maybe become a little bit more engaged in that. And some of their um, the points in the minutes that I read talked about, you know, different municipalities are doing some pretty neat things. Cornwall's offering like a $5 drop in and curl rate and, and different things to try and engage our, our seniors. We've all talked about how much things are going up and, and, you know, in our senior group, I think we really need to look at what we can do to take better. And I'm wondering if you could kind of put a request back to that committee, Councillor Tweel, to maybe look at some more, a little bit more depth into this to see if they could put some kind of a proposal in place that could come back to council for us to look at how we could better support our senior people in our city and uh, see what we can get them a little bit more actively engaged in. Okay. Do you want to answer that or you want a question from Councillor Dron? Oh, okay. Oh. Just one second. Uh, Go ahead. I want to thank you for your suggestion and uh, Chris Drummond's error. Our acting manager, Parks and Rec, and uh, we'll certainly look into it and examine that possibility. Thank you very much. Councilor Drawn. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Uh, I see in the minutes here that uh, there were some requests. I, I was speaking to one of the managers of the Sherwood team, the junior teams, and they were asking if they could get a, uh, um, a bit of ice time at the new rink because uh, Sherwood is, is uh, you know, a little smaller, I guess, for for dressing rooms and things like that. And when I look in here, it's figure skating and, and can power skates. I'm just wondering, would there be an appetite to change a little bit? Uh, I know some of the uh, junior teams, when they get a bigger crowd, it's it's a little uh, tight at, at the sportsplex there. And where figure skaters, well, they, they need a nice surface, there's no question. I'm just wondering, could there ever be a movement on uh, say a, a power skating uh, that's in Simmons to go to Sherwood or, or something like that, just to be adjusted to give older players a little more room. Um, but I mean, if it's if it's something that you know it, this demographics of people living around Simmons go there, uh, you know, I understand that. But it's just uh, you know the manager had asked me a question. I said I'd ask you. That's that's all I know. Thank you. Gus Twill, do you want to answer that question? No, it's a, it's a good question. Um, I'm not sure. Are you, you're talking about ice time in general for all our uh, community user groups, or are you talking specifically for uh, the proposal that you see in front of you? The Junior uh, B. Junior B. Just junior C. Yeah. Junior B. Well, um, well, uh, we'll 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 take another advisement. Uh, we'll, we're willing to you know explore any opportunity. Um, the uh, 
the request from the uh, Knights hockey team. Yeah. Uh, made a request. They're playing their hockey at the Cary facility and wanted to, uh, wanted to play their uh, home games and practices at Simmons. But our staff pointed out quite accurately and quite clearly uh, the ice time just isn't there. Uh, we have other uh, community user groups that have uh, utilized the old Simmons Arena. And they're quite happy with that arrangement. And they want to stay. So recommendation from the staff was not to alter that arrangement. And the committee unanimously supported that. But on, on you know, maybe a changeover from Simmons uh, Sportsplex or the Cody Banks, uh, again, Christopher's made a note of it. And we're certainly willing to explore that. Yeah. And there's a one-year review, like one-year, Frank? That's, that's for the, the Knights, we're going to come back in a year to look at it again. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I think I think though. Yeah. Uh, I think Mr. White pointed out that uh, you know certainly we'll have a look at it, but I think he did. He did say, I stand to be corrected. He doesn't anticipate any other, uh, yeah. you know, any, any ice time freeing up. But I mean, everything's uh, subject to review. I mean, yeah. we're always reviewing and assessing yeah. things as 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 we go along. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Duran. Yeah. If there's a will, there's a way. Councilor Ramsey. Thank you for your report, Councilor Tweel, and and I agree with everybody too. The thing we got to be careful about, we all would love to see an extra right surface in the city because we know we need it 100%. Even when I was my past years as president of minor hockey and things along that line, we're always short and scrambling for ice time. But at the same time, a lot of these user groups that's been at certain other rinks like your Cody Banks and that, the drawing card is the new rink, and everybody wants to play out of the new rink, and we're, we just can't be, like I don't sit on Parks Recreation, but we can't be moving other things out of there that's been there for years just because it's a new rink and these other teams want to go in there. And I understand why they want to be there. It's a new arena. The dress rooms are going to be bigger. It's like it's a state-of-the-art thing. So we just got to be careful in what we're doing because, like, as Justin Matar stated one time too, he, like he's past president of Sherwood, like the groups are there, were there for years. So we just can't be entertained and everything. Thank you. That's just oh, a statement. Thank you. A couple of resolutions here. Oh wait. So, sorry, uh, uh, we can't see you. So um, I, I did see your text. Do you have I a know. question for Councillor Tweel on his report, Deputy Mayor Yankov? I do. Thank you. Yes, I do. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay, good, perfect. Okay, yeah, thank you, Councillor Tweel, for your report. And I did notice under your introduction of new business, um, the uh, your request to have a special meeting of your committee to discuss the parks and recreation venues. And um, uh, I would just wonder if, if we could build on your request and when you have that meeting, if there could be um, a little bit of discussion around you know, what constitutes operational versus, um, versus uh, you know, resolutions of council? You know, for example, like we're, we have a resolution tonight for the opening of the Victoria Park um, Road, but we don't need, an, we didn't need a resolution, say, for the eclipse viewing. And um, so I'd be, I'd be um, quite um, interested in attending your meeting when you have those discussions. So I just wanted to point that out if we could just build on that when you have that meeting a little bit. Thank you. Councilor Twilley, you want to respond? Yes. Uh, you're more than welcome to attend our committee meeting. Um, the request was uh, concerning the green space in front of Founders Hall and uh, new usage for that facility. Um, anytime there's a request for any parks and recreation venue or facility, that is vented through the Parks and Recreation Committee. The Parks Committee does uh, deliberations, arrives at a conclusion, and forwards that uh, recommendation on to, uh, to council. So uh, that's always been, uh, it's always been uh, the methodology, and I raise that uh, because of, uh, you know, I, I guess a request for a new, new usage for that facility. I can tell you that uh, when I moved the resolution to purchase that property, 
we told the community that that green space would remain green, green for the community so people could use it at their, as their, at their leisure. Uh, the intention was never for uh, intense usage or to make it that active that it's, uh, some would see it as overwhelming. Nonetheless, uh, we're going to have that discussion, which we should. Uh, that's, that's a responsibility of the Parks and Recreation Committee. And uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Lana, you are more than welcome to attend our meeting. Okay. Resolution 1. Moved by Councillor Tweel, seconded by Councillor Mittart. Be it resolved that as per the recently advertised request for proposals for security patrol for City Parks in Victoria Park 2024, the City of Charlottetown accepts the low bid amount of $50,064 plus applicable taxes from Atlantic Private Protection Service to provide park patrol security services and that the City retains the option to extend the contract for the 2025 and 2026 seasons at the same price, price if mutually agreed to. And further that the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Council Ramsey. Thank you, your worship. And I support this. Uh, just for a refresher for my mind, security starts, is it May till October? I, I, I'm just trying to get the dates of, of where we're going to have them there. Can anybody answer that? Uh, it's, a, it's in the resolution. It's in the resolution? The background. The background. Sorry. Okay. 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 Good. Good. Question. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Beck. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, just wondering what the hours are for the, it said between the Thursday and Sunday evening is six hours per evening for 24 hours. Uh, Mr. Chair, if you could just, do you know what time or what, what the hours are we're looking at? Is it four to 10, six to 12? Uh, I do know that the Mondays are gonna be covered from time to time as well too, but they are uh, just as needed. So if you could, provide any kind of information on that? Councilor Twail. On, on the specific times, I think it starts at uh, 7, 7, uh, 7, 8. Uh, we do have uh, the Ambassadors Program, which is operating on a, on a daily basis, and I think they conclude around 8 o'clock. Sorry. Uh, to the mayor, to the chair, no. the Victoria Park Ambassadors will go seven days a week in Victoria Park from 12 until 6 p.m. Six or eight? Six. And then the park patrol comes on from 6 till 12. 6 to 12, okay. Okay. And, and uh, again, Councillor Back, that is Thursday to Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Uh, Monday, Monday to Wednesday. Uh, there's nothing there about the ambassadors program. And again, everything is subject to review. Uh, staff gave glowing uh, remarks about this current uh, service provider and security, and uh, the committee endorsed that. Okay. Questions called. All those in favor? I have a question. Oh, we just go right ahead. It's it's more of a comment. I mean, I will definitely support this resolution. But I also noticed in the minutes that Councillor Twill had mentioned that he'd like to see the park security expanded in Victoria Park for seven days a week. And I totally support um, that, that goal. So I just wanted to say I will support tonight, but I would love to see us work towards a seven day a week, um, as, as he had mentioned in his report. So you're in favor of the resolution? Yes. I am. 10 0. Okay. Do you want to sum up there in that resolution? Oh, I, I just wanted to, yeah. to uh, concur yeah, okay. with the deputy mayor. I, I've raised that now for a number of years, not just this year, for a number of years because of the activities in the park. Uh, Victoria Park is like a national park. Uh, it's extremely busy. Uh, you know, uh, six o'clock, eight o'clock on, regardless what night it is. I mean, the boardwalk's busy. The ball fields are busy. Uh, skateboard park. There's a lot of people in that park. So. Uh, 
once again, we'll do a review and examination uh, uh, throughout the season. And who knows, maybe we'll be back to council for more funding. Okay. Never know. Next resolution. Moved by Councillor Tweel, seconded by Councillor Matart. Be it resolved that from April 10th, 2024, the interior laneway of the Victoria Park Roadway will be closed to vehicular traffic to allow for the laneway to be used as an active transportation pathway. Councillor McCabe. Thank you. Thank you, now that the resolution's on the floor. Do we have to open and close the lane every single year? Can we not have like a, a Victoria Park laneway is going to be open from, or closed from April till September and then, yeah. like every year we're voting on this, when we open it, when yeah. we close it, and I think it goes back to what Deputy Mayor Yankoff was asking a little bit earlier ago, you know, we close it for the eclipse because it's the eclipse, like do we have to keep having a resolution? Yeah all the time or can yeah. we just I think our farmers markets in that situation too I looked and you had 2010 2011 2012 oh. 2013 14 then they stopped and now they're moving it and then we're going back trying to figure out what did they do 12 years ago I just think we need to tighten this up Councilor Tweel. well I believe um, I think management will correct me if I'm wrong uh, this is part of the Victoria Park bylaw um, you know, that we have to comply with the, with the bylaw. Uh, I can tell you, Councillor McKay, that I am strongly in favor of this uh, active transportation pathway, as we now commonly refer to. Uh, like to see this um, be open, no vehicle traffic, 365 days of the year. I know that there's been uh, some discussions internally with the Parks and Recreation Senior Management Team, I believe, as well as with the uh, Public Works. Uh, it was discussed at our last meeting. Hopefully, I emphasize and underline the word hopefully, uh, we'll come in with a plan, an infrastructure plan that uh, would do a number of things. Everything with replacing the new lights in the boulevard to putting in the proper amenities, the proper safety uh, uh, facilities and, and amenities that would make it safe, not have that uh, vehicle traffic conflict with the pedestrian traffic or runners, bikers, rollerbladers, whatever the case may be. This is a very popular venue. It's time now to perfect it. And it, it is time to make that uh, open uh, as an active transportation pathway. 365 days a year. So I'm going to be leaning on our staff yeah. uh, to come with a plan that I think council will be very excited about and be very supportive of. Okay. Thank hey. you. Can I just go with Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Yankoff because I don't want to miss her. Deputy Mayor, you got a question? <laughs> I do. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I, when I was listening to the um, meeting um, online, I Notice when we just when when the discussion was happening around the Victoria Park closure, um, the manager stated that all non-motorized passive transportation was permitted on this section of the road once it closed. So it was referencing walkers, runners, baby strollers, skateboards, bicycles. So that obviously means that there's no electric bikes, no electric scooters. So I'm just wondering how how is that going to be enforced? You want to defer that to the manager? You want to give it a shot there, Council? Well, I go think ahead. it's a good question. I'll take a shot at it. Um, again, we're assessing and examining, you know, all the different user groups that use that that uh, that venue, and you know, it's it's no surprise. There's there's new uh, there's new technology. There's new uh, devices that that people utilize. Um, you know, that's something we'll we'll have to examine again. We'll have to assess it as we move along. Well, we're not in favor of any uh, electric uh, bicycles or cyclists uh, on that uh, on that venue. It's 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 a passive venue, although some of the uh, cyclists do go uh, and pick up enormous speed uh, when they're 
traveling through, the, through there. Uh, one of the reasons why we made it an active transportation pathway was because of COVID. Uh, more people had the opportunity to come out and be outside and there's too many people on the boardwalk. So we kind of opened that up and opened that up to all user groups. We made it uh, truly inclusive for everyone to participate and use that venue. And it's worked out quite well. And that's why we continued on in the, uh, you know, with that same logic and rationale to make it an active transportation pathway. So uh, once again, our manager's here, our assistant manager's here. Uh, all these points are going to be well documented. Uh, we're going to be assessing things as we go along, but that, that's a very good question. Thank you. Councilor Bernard. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I just want to comment, Your Worship, and, you know, when we brought in the ambassador program, that was the idea why we brought it in was just for that reason. So, because we had opened up those lanes and we decided to go the educational route, there's some people on it with, whether they're electric <coughs> scooters or whatever, that the ambassadors would stop them, tell them they're not allowed to be there, and explain why. So that was that's that's really one of, one of the main reasons that we put in the ambassador program. So I believe the ambassadors are there seven days a week. I'm pretty sure it's seven days a week. Oh. Councilor McCabe. Thank you. I'm just circling back then, and maybe going to request to put a note, notice a note, a uh, notice of motion. If you could take back to your committee, maybe and look at the Victoria Park bylaw and look at if we can mend. That, I agree, I support 100%. The more we can open up that laneway and get people moving, it's great. Um, so if I could put that motion for your committee and I'll look forward to hearing a report back. Okay, we, were you just gonna say yes or? No. Okay, okay. Yes, but yeah. I, I do wanna caution you on the notice of motion. We gotta make sure that our infrastructure, uh, our infrastructure is contemporary and we put all the, the safety measures and all the, all the, you know, the, the, the amenities that, that would make it safe to have that shut off for, you know, the year round. I'm strongly in favor of it. I mean, we have to yeah. amend the Victoria Park uh, bylaw, but we're going to come in with a plan that would include all of that, Councillor McKay. Just, just to clarify, Councillor Twill, I think she's saying about why does this have to come back every year? It's not about closing for the full year. She's saying why do we have, but it's oh. a pretty sick. Can we just ask Frank about the bylaw? Oh, just, just, were you talking all year round? Or like... I I'm sorry, go ahead. I certainly support your, your bigger vision, absolutely, but what I'm talking about right now is putting a notice because we have to amend the Victoria Park bylaw if we're gonna not have to come back to council every six months to open and shut the road. That's the only little piece right now that wouldn't require infrastructure, that would require a simple amendment now that we know that this is a success. Just, we're gonna get uh, your, your manager, he's pretty fluent in that bylaw. Uh, your Worship, through to uh, Councillor McCabe. Um, yeah, so right now it says May 1st, October 31st. We don't have to come to Council when we're closing it because it has a closed uh, shutoff date unless we're going to keep it open longer. What we're looking at doing is probably going to put it forward as April 1st since the weather has improved dramatically over the years, over the last uh, four years. There's only been one year it didn't open until May 1st. And it would maybe leave... Uh, the department to actually make the decision if weather is not permitting it due to snow, ice, that kind of thing, then we could decide not to open it as early, uh, but that would have to be in the bylaw because when you have a bylaw in place, it does define when it opens, when it closes, so. Okay, wait now, Deputy, uh, uh, do you have a question there, Deputy? I can't see you, so did you put your hand up? No, I had, no, I, I had, Okay. Already asked my question. Thank called. you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Ramsey. Everybody in favor? <laughs> in favor. Okay. And Councillor McKinnon is out of the room, so I'll have to put. Okay. Water and wastewater. Councillor Ron. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Water and sewer met on March 14th, and your minutes are in your package. I have a couple of resolutions come forward, and if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask them. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Twill? Uh, it's, not, it's not a question, uh, Councillor Duran. It's, I just want to express my gratitude, my appreciation to the, uh, the work crews uh, that are out there. You know, during the winter months, waking up in the February morning at 3 o'clock in the morning and out repairing water mains, 
That's not easy work. We're in bed nice and warm while our crews are out there repairing water mains. And I just want to uh, give a shout out to our uh, blue collar worker that's out there doing uh, extremely uh, good service, great service, and reliable service. Can you please take that back to uh, all the workers in the water and sewer department. Thank you, Councilor Twill. We'll, we'll put that on the agenda for uh, Thursday, and we'll, we'll thank them in their meeting. But thank you. Here, here, staff. Good go. Here, here, staff. That's good. Do you want to read the first resolution? Moved by Councillor Duran, seconded by Councillor Matard. Be it resolved that the City of Charlottetown proceeds with the procurement of one hermetic gas booster and accepts the bid submitted by Flowstar Industrial in the amount of $62,654.14 plus applicable taxes, and that the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Okay. CAO, can you explain what's a hermetic gas booster? <laughs> Question? Call. Question's called. Councilor Ramsey, call, call the question. All those in favor? Deputy Mayor? In favor. Okay, 10 0 for the dramatic gas booster. Next. Second one. Moved by Councillor Drawn, seconded by Councillor Mittart. Be it resolved that the City of Charlottetown submit an application to list the natural areas of the water and sewer utility owned well field properties under the Other Effective Area Based Conservation Measures, OECM designation and that the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Questions called? All in favor, please raise your hand. Deputy Mayor Yankoff? In favor. 10-0. Okay. Carried. Okay. Public Works, Councilor McCabe. Thank you. So the Public Works uh, Committee did not meet since our last regular council meeting. We meet on Thursday. I think we have A to T agenda items, so I hope everybody comes well rested. Um, our Civic Board with Persons with Disabilities met on the 19th of March. Those minutes are in your package. There is no, There are no resolutions. Um, just to kind of provide a quick update that um, the operational side, they've started the process of switching the equipment from winter to summer maintenance as well as getting the street sweepers out to begin to clean the roadside deb debris. Uh, people are starting to return back to work. They'll start doing yard work repair and all that fun stuff that we see them over the summer. That'll start in the next few weeks. Um, they're also starting to resurface the wooden and old-fashioned benches, with many benches going out in their locations in the next few weeks. On the capital construction side, the two major projects are moving forward. Um, the contractors begin to mobilize Seaview Boulevard, where the street will be completely reconstructed. I know that there's been some, uh, some happy people and some not-so-happy people about this project, but I think if they could only understand the reasons behind, and maybe that's something we'll look at our committee to just get a little bit more information out. It's not free money from the Fed, so we thought we'd rip up a boulevard, but there was a lot of issues on that street with... Uh, tree roots and pipes and, and stuff that needed to be re replaced. So I think it's important that they get the correct information, as well as the Eastern Gateway is well underway, and that work will continue in the coming months. Uh, staff is asking the public to keep an eye on social media channels, as our comms department does a great job to advise when to anticipate impacted areas in our city. The engineers are busy finalizing street resurfacing tenders with an expected tendering date at the end of April, as well as new sidewalk construction with an expected tendering date of mid to late May. Uh, we will be updated at committee on Thursday as far as now that we have the approved budget in place to see what projects will actually be uh, tendered out for this year, and we'll be sure to update you with the next council meeting. Any questions, I'll do my best to answer. Council McTard. Thank you, uh, Your Worship, to the Chair. I'd just like to say uh, and recognize uh, Dave Bell for coming in and presenting uh, on uh, accessibility challenges uh, throughout the city that he's identified and also um, putting forward some recommendations around 
uh, in during construction and building uh, elevators, et cetera. So I just wanted to point out and say thank you today for coming and doing that presentation. Councilor Ramsey. Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you for your part, Councilor McCabe. And you brought up Seaview, and I know everybody doesn't see the end of the light at the, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel, but at the same time, it's as, and I really am pleased that the residents are up to date on everything that's going on, and that, that our city crew went out and had letters for them before the project started, and had the plans and along that line. And if we keep everybody up to date, I think it's gonna go very smooth, thank you. Okay, it's good to have the assistant chief engineer here, Riley Twill, and his. Uh, good job there, Riley. You do there, Joey. Okay, we get two resolutions. No, no resolutions. Oh, maybe after tomorrow. Okay, economic, tourism, and cultural development, and that's Councillor Trevor McKinnon, Laura Lee's here, and uh, Wayne, the team. Different view up here. <laughs> Go ahead. I can. Go ahead. Thank you, Council Mayor. <laughs> Economic Tourism Development uh, Cultural Development Committee met on March 26. Minutes of the meeting are in your package. The Arts Advisory Board did not meet since our last monthly uh, meeting of Council. Uh, there's two resolutions for your consideration. Uh, in your package, and we'll be offering a few de departmental highlights. So welcome, we'd like to welcome the following businesses who recently opened in the downtown Charlottetown area. Christopher Griffin Art Gallery, Debali Grills, Vita Pros Fan, and Yours for Keeps Tattoo and Arts Collective. Next month, staff will be participating alongside Innovation PEI in an international foreign direct investment mission. The mission will focus on the bio center sector. The 2024 crew season began yesterday with the arrival of MCS Poesias World Cruise. Yesterday also marked an unofficial opening of the City Hall Visitor Information Center for the season. During April and May, the Visitor Information Center will be staffed on cruise ship days. Regular hours will begin on June 3rd. Our manager of economic growth and attraction recently participated on a national sport tourism panel during the 2024 Sports Events Congress in Winnipeg. He will also address the delegation at next week's Tourism Industry Day hosted by the Tourism Industry Association of PEI. April is set to be a busy event hosting month, a busy, busy month with six sports events four Atlantic, one Eastern Canadian, and one International, along with the Atlantic Makers Market, PEI Fashion Weekend, and the PEI Festival of Wines. With the East Coast Music Awards, Festival and Conference and Event Atlantic Summit set to kickstart in May, the signature event schedule shows no sign of slowing down. So that's a report. Uh, Manager Wayne Long and Laura Lee are here to help with any questions if anybody may have. Okay. Councilor Trill. Just uh, regards to the presentation that was made regarding the CFL, and I don't think there's a resolution yeah, coming. There is a resolution. There is a, okay, I'll wait then. Okay. Okay. I, CAO Eleanor, I think we're ready for the resolutions. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by Councilor McKinnon, seconded by Councilor McAleer. Be it resolved, whereas the Atlantic Moose recently presented to the Economic Tourism and Cultural Development Committee expressing their interest in Charlottetown becoming home to the Canadian Football League uh, CFL team, and whereas Councillor Mitchell Tweel, supported by the Economic Tourism and Cultural Development Committee, proposed supporting the Atlantic Moose and exploring the possibility of hosting a CFL game in Charlottetown at a future date. And whereas through conversations with the CFL by city staff and directly to the Atlantic Moose, it was clearly communicated 
that there are extensive requirements associated with hosting should a location be selected, including but not limited to posting a bond in the amount of one million Canadian dollars and serving as the game financial guarantor. CFL Quality Field, approved by League Office Football Operations, CFL, PA, and TSN. Capacity for at least 12,000 fans with stadium seating. A fully approved site to the standard of the CFL and its partners. CFL Quality Practice Facilities at a location separate from the stadium. Evidence of organizers' abilities to deliver appropriate equipment, power, constructed broadcast compound, and IT services, etc. And whereas the Atlantic Moose will be required to provide the municipality with a business plan inclusive of financials, confirmation of investors, and evidence of who will serve as the financial guarantor. Therefore, be it resolved that Council provide a letter of endorsement to the Atlantic Moose in the support of their efforts to host a CFL game in Charlottetown once the above required information has been received and it is satisfactory to the municipality's requirements. Councilor McCabe, Councilor Twill, and Councilor Bernard. Thank you. All right. And my first question, I have two questions, I guess. Uh, one would be, uh, was there a lot of time invested in this on staff's part to explore and, and look into this as a even possibility? And second question would be, how would a committee recommend that this even come to council tonight? I, and no disrespect, it would be lovely, but to think that we're going to have a 12,000 um, 12, fan stadium for a CFL game and then have a separate stadium for them to practice in and then put a million dollar bond down. I'm just, I'm just, and I'm not, no disrespect when I ask the question. I, I'm just wondering, how did this make it to a package to come here tonight to even look at this? And I, I'm, I'd like an answer. Councilor McCabe, uh, McKinnon. Just one second, I'm trying to get you up there. Go ahead. Thank you for your question, Councilor McCabe. Uh, your first question, I'm going to re refer to uh, Mr. Long for your, an answer on how much time was spent, but the information that's in the resolution wasn't the information that was presented to us on the day of our meeting. It was uh, a councillor asked if it would be able to entertain a possibility of an exhibition game, CFL. It was seconded and it was moved to come to council with that. This uh, further information was provided to us in the resolution. Just tonight? Just tonight. Okay. So. And I'll refer to Mr. Long to answer the first part of your question. Mr. Long. Through your chair, through the chair, your worship uh, to Councillor McCabe. So staff have been um, conversing back and forth with representatives from the Atlantic Moose for several months now, as well as uh, admin staff have been communicating as well with an ongoing request uh, to present. Uh, recently, the committee um, entertained a presentation from the Moose. Their primary request was to uh, garner council support to bid uh, with respect to um, an expansion franchise for the Charlottetown area. And then during our committee meeting, um, Councillor Tweel, as the res resolution indicated, suggested that perhaps there should be first uh, consideration given to an exhibition game to determine if there was uh, a path forward. Uh, the additional information that the chair alludes to um, came as the direct result of conversations with the CFL by both the municipality as well as the Atlantic Moose. Um, these are just standard uh, general uh, requirements. It should also be noted that there's also a large operational budget that comes with the event, likely uh, north of $2 million to host potentially. And then of course, the teams and players association, television rights holders, et cetera, has to agree uh, to that. So this is an exploratory uh, process and that brings us to where we are today. Couldn't see, huh? Too much reflection. Uh, Councillor Tweel. Yes, uh, you know, as they're moving the motion, I thought uh, it'd be pretty exciting to host a CFL game here in Canada's smallest <coughs> province. I know as a member of the uh, Island Tackle Football community, when we started our campaign back in 1990, the late 80s, uh, that was one of our goals, was to host a CFL game here. CFL games have been hosted in Moncton, Halifax, 
every province of Canada, but we've never hosted one here. And not, why not explore that exciting possibility? It'd be great for amateur football here in this province. And, and you know, this is no different than any other event that our manager of uh, economic development goes out, explores, see what the possibilities are, uh, build a case, see what type of uh, support we get from, for example, the other levels of government, provincial, federal, ACOA, um, who knows, this could become an annual event if, if uh, it's properly planned out. Tonight we're just trying to explore that possibility and uh, I think that the uh, people in this province and the people in this city <coughs> would welcome that opportunity to, to actually see a CFL game here in the capital city. Uh, we could get a lot of different industries involved, everything from, uh, you know, whether it be uh, the fishing industry, uh, uh, we could partner with, uh, you know, Holland College, the Culinary Institute. It could be a phenomenal event. So sometimes you have to let your imaginations grow and, 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 and explore. And, and uh, I'm certainly all in favor of it. I'm, I'm proud to be the mover of the motion. Uh, it's been one of our goals, again, as a representative from the Island Tackle football community, it's been one of our goals to host a CFL game, and not even an exhibition, a regular season game. I attended the one in Moncton just a few years ago, and, and it went over extremely well. And I did have an opportunity <coughs> to have a short discussion with the commissioner, and I let him uh, let it be known at that time that uh, we would love to host a game here, here in Charlottetown. Uh, last term, we passed a resolution supporting a CFL team in Halifax to, to demonstrate that regional support, uh, whether it's a team in Halifax or Moncton, all the Maritimes, Atlantic Canada would be very supportive. But I, I do think it's time that we host a CFL game here in the capital city, again, with all the prerequisites that our managers pointed out in the, uh, in the resolution. I think this is just a starting point to uh, have that exploratory uh, 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 options and those opportunities. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Bernard. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I have to concur with Councillor McCabe uh, on the resolution. Uh, I was kind of lost on it too, um, but it makes sense if it just came through today, I guess. To me, it's, ac it's actually, I'm not sure if they're asking for permission to host one game or we ask permission here to the Atlanta Canada Moose want to set up shop here. Um, so, so I'm not really sure because of the, 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 the uh, resolution goes on. If I get this to move. Uh, posting a bond in the amount of a million dollars as a game financial guarantor, CFL quality field approved by the League Office of, of, of Operations, capacity of at least 12,000 fans with stadium seating, a fully approved site to the standard of CFL and its partners, CFL quality practice facilities and locations separate from the stadium, evidence of organized ability to deliver appropriate equipment. There's a lot of questions here I don't see are answered, and I'm just wondering, I thought that there was a conversation here a few years ago. I thought, and actually, um, Councillor, if you, if you, if you, uh, I recall it was a conversation here. I thought CFL was, was, was done in Atlanta, Canada, but I mean, maybe your manager can expand on that. Um, I'm kind of wondering if this resolution shouldn't be deferred at least till it gets some more information. Um, I mean, in principle, I think most of us would be, would be agreeable. Um, I'm not sure you need a resolution just yet. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things that have to come to play. I mean, there's no business plan. Um, I understand you're looking for confirmation of investors, evidence who's going to serve as a financial guarantee. There's none of that. We have none of it, no information. So uh, personally, it's not something I'm interested in voting on. I'm, I'm not even sure. The, the, the one game, they want to try and get the CFL to come here for a game? Sure. Yeah, yeah. But that's not what the resolution says. So I would, I would at least, at the very least, defer this. And if you want to put a resolution on the host to see if that tells, see if they want to come. But. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I, uh, yeah. Again, 
I, I just asked. Uh, I just I, asked Tracy. I, I would like an answer though to that to my oh, no. question on the CFL and Tracy. And where, where's the report for the, all this? There's there's no report, Wayne. No. Like, can you just just before you answer his question, where's the report to say post in a bond million dollars CFL qual? Like, I, I agree. There's a. Why do we need all this if we're just asking for them a host of CFL football game? Like, that's what I'm why do you need it's, 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 that's well, required? It looks to me like it's one ass went to another. Wait, you worship the the support of the municipalities required for this to advance to the the CFL. It's being hosted in the city. They need to see that there's support for the municipality. Then they would move on to the um, the provincial government and other potential partners. The inf the the information that's on the resolution just came to us um, recently, so it wasn't on the original report that went to the committee, but the, the original report is in the package. And for clarification, um, the group approached the municipality with respect to supporting their efforts for an expansion franchise, which transitioned into the potential of hosting an exhibition game. So it started off here and, and moved to a, a, an entirely other discussion. So that's how we got to where we are um, at this point in time. Um, so in, in short, the municipality needs to signal its support or there would not be an on-ramp to advance. Okay. I'm, Councilor I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, could I get that last sentence? The, the municipality what? The municipality would need to signal its support in order for this file to advance with the CFL, and the Atlantic Moose are aware of that, and thus they're requesting a letter of support from the municipality. Okay. I, I, think just, I want to get Councilor McKinnon. Councilor McKinnon, can you answer to his question? Yes, please, yeah. Yeah, let's get that done first. Do you, you, you want me to repeat the question? I would, I would love if you could just repeat the direct yeah, question. Yeah, just give us the question again. Yeah, no, I, I thought there was a conversation here not too long ago, and, and Wayne, Wayne's uh, office, I thought it was where it was coming from, but it's a couple years ago. I thought the CFL had made a statement they weren't, they weren't interested in coming to Atlanta, Canada. And I was just looking for that confirmation if that was in case. So that's the question. That was in fact the case. Um, I'll have to defer that to Wayne. That's before yeah. my time yeah. on council. Okay. Um, your... You were saying the resolution doesn't re answer about the game or whether we're looking for a commitment to the move. Well, what, what it was I, a motion put on the floor by a councillor in our meeting asking for one game, and this is the requirements that uh, came back that we are required to do, well, I do believe. Okay. So just, can we just get the question answered? Okay. Go ahead there, Wayne. Through the chair, you worship uh, to Councillor Bernard. So I've had um, ongoing communication, um, general communication with the CFL as well. So my first discussion with them uh, would have been in the summer of 2022, uh, where they signaled that they were focused on larger metropolitan centers in the Atlantic region, namely Halifax and Moncton, for a number of reasons. And that's why touchdown Atlantic games were held in those centers. And then the most recent uh, discussions um, They've indicated that they're always open to listening to potential business opportunities. However, they're not endorsing any of these opportunities that are coming forward, um, unless there's a whole seriousness to them, which needs to be serious investors, there need to be a business plan, there needs to be a number of supporting um, contributions to that. And uh, they've also indicated that it is an elevated reach to host a, a CFL game, but they'll give consideration to any request uh, that comes for it. But you need to meet all of the league's um, requirements. We've done a bit of research as well uh, within the Halifax area generally. Um, there's a, about, I guess without having a, a budget in front of me, I'm told there's about a $2 million operational budget that also comes with executing the event. Um, and I can't speak in depth to that. I'm only getting that information from a previous uh, host destination. So uh, I'm not sure where the CFL is today with respect to Atlantic Canada. Touchdown Atlantic, which has happened here a number of years in a row or every other year, is now flipping to Touchdown Pacific. This year's game is in um, Victoria. Um, and uh, that's where the league's focus is right now. Councilman Tarrant. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I always say if you wait long enough in the queue here, sometimes your questions already get answered, but I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna ask them anyways, I guess, just for my own clarity. You got a different question? What you have a different question? I'll, I'll ask in a different way. So when I do, when I do uh, read and interpret this, I, I'm, I am confused. I see two things. I'm, I see hosting an actual CFL team, and I see uh, hosting a game. Uh, so my question is, is uh, to the to the chair are these the prerequisites to host a single game here on uh, Prince Edward Island uh, 
And if so, I'm, I'm pretty confident thinking we couldn't achieve any of those prerequisites. Hence, why would they even entertain our um, interest or, as you were calling it, um, uh, you know, gauging our temperature or whatever to see. Uh, so I feel like we would be putting ourselves in a position not to even be able to action upon this. If they were coming here to uh, have an exhibition game of some sort and they could utilize, you know, somewhere like uh, UPEI as its current state, then I think this would be something that we would be all in favor for. But if these are the prerequisites, even to have a single game here on in Prince Edward Island, in Charlottetown, I'm not sure how we'd even be able to entertain any of these. So I just want to make this clear. Are these the prerequisites to hosting an actual team on Prince Edward Island or hosting a game? And I think, that, and if it's both, then I don't think we can meet that. But that's, so I need that clarity for myself, so help me make a decision. To Councilor the McKinnon. Thank you. Councilor McKinnon. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, it's my understanding that these pre-requirements are for us to host one game, bring two teams here not to host the team. Okay. Council McLear. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Um, uh, is uh, priority to the uh, resolution, second that I uh, sit in economic development. Um, my purpose in, um, in seconding uh, the, uh, the resolution to come up to council here, um, I was, um, um, I think, kind of expressed uh, pretty much a sentiment uh, at the committee level that I was, uh, um, you know, uh, skeptical of you know uh, you know off this thing, uh, the CFL the team thing, and then then it distilled down to maybe uh, you know hosting the game. I know Councillor Tweel is a very passionate football person. Uh, anybody that knows him knows his history is uh, you know uh, in his DNA. Um, I just felt that um, that to uh, shut it down at the committee level, I wanted to second it, get it up to council here to have the discussion that we're having. Uh, personally, um, I, um, although I've seconded it, um, I, uh, and then in light of the additional information that came out, I think the fact that it come up to council, I, I can't say for certain, but I'm guessing that uh, Wayne and his team probably have, have done a deeper dive. There's additional information come out that uh, that uh, puts a dimmer light on it uh, for me, and uh, and as a result, uh, I won't be sub supporting the resolution. Thank you, Councilor Peck. Yeah, uh, I honestly, I think there's big challenges <laughs> that lay ahead of this move of getting anywhere. But if I understand, and I attended that meeting, and if I understand this, we're saying to Atlantic Moose, come to us with a financial plan, determine your investors, determine a financial guar guarantor, Come back to us, illustrate how you're going to accommodate 12,000 people, what are the television rights going to be, all this stuff. So at this point in time, if I'm understanding it correctly, we're, saying to, we're just saying to Atlantic Moose, you do your work, you come back to us and say, here's how we see this unfolding right now. <clears throat> um, Unless I'm missing something here, I think that's what's being asked. And then Atlantic Moose might come back and they may say to us, here's what we're looking for, here's what's required, and then we will say, yeah, that's a great idea, or no, that's not a great idea. So if I'm, not, if I'm misunderstanding that, could someone correct me? But yeah. that's where I think we are. And if we're going down that road, if that's what the ask is right now, I would be supportive of allowing Atlantic Moose to do their work and then come back to us and see what what they have. I don't know if I want to, like, like I said off the hop, I don't know if it's going to be achievable. I think they've got a lot of work ahead of them, especially what you said, Wayne, about where the CFL is in terms of their priorities and whether they want to come to smaller locales or whether they want to focus on larger cities. So. I don't want to shut the door to the gentleman that comes in, but I think the challenges are big, but they may be able to overcome those challenges and they may be able to come back to something with us and say, hey, here's what our vision is, here's what our plan is. Charlottetown, sorry, Charlottetown City Council, what do you think? So if that's, if that's the case, I'm okay with supporting it. Um, 
and see where we go. Okay. Thanks. Council McKenna, do you want to just address that? And then if, if not, you can defer to uh, your, uh, thank you, your, your staff. Worship, uh, staff. Thank you, Councillor Beck, for your question. I think you answered your own question and yeah. your commentary. But um, I, I will defer this to, uh, to Manager Long. So you, can you clarify for us, Wayne, like, is this what you're going to be asking the moves to come back with? I, I, where, do they come, where, where are they going to come up with the 12,000 seat stadium? You, are they portable? Like, can you ship them in? Um, through the chair, Your Worship, uh, to Councillor um, Beck, that is the intent of the, uh, of the resolution. Um, I, I suppose you can create any type of event venue you want, but you need to be prepared to have deep um, pockets and the logistics team in order to, um, to achieve that. The one other item that I would add here as well, that we, we just also recently received communication from the university who's been contacted by the Atlantic Moose, and the university has indicated to them that they will not entertain further discussions until they know that there's a support and this event is um, backed by the city of Charlottetown. Okay, Councilor McTard and then Councilor Twill. No, Councilor, you, you can go right because I'm always missing you and I don't want to miss you this time. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for the, the consideration. Um, I think it is back to, I think we've got this battle going back and forth. You're asking one question, I'm asking the other, and I still don't think we're getting to the middle of this. Is there anything in here that we are committing as, other than the fact that we're committing as a council to entertain um, uh, an endorsement of by Atlantic Moose and provide something? Are, are we committed to having to put up a $1 million, a $1 million bond? Are we committed to anything other than just entertaining a business plan put together by Atlantic yeah. Moose. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. And if that is the case, that cost us nothing to get that done, yeah. correct? Is that my, so that's the question I have. Yeah. If there's no cost to us other than just getting this and entertain this, which it may fall flat because we can't meet any of these criteria. Yeah. Uh, but then I would question, is that putting our city staff uh, time uh, at best yeah. use to entertain something that we may not get? Councilor just, McKinnon. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor um, Tart. I believe the requirements in the resolution state what we are responsible to provide. Um, Councilor Manja Long, can, if there's something different than what's in the resolution, can, to the answer to that question, please. Through the Chair, Your Worship, to Councilor Mittard. Um, essentially, the, the resolution um, suggests that if the municipality was to provide a letter of support showing our interest to engage in further discussions with the Moose, those three items that are in the second last paragraph would need to be achieved prior to any support of council being signaled. So we would be required, they would be required to provide a sound business plan, uh, talk about who their financial guarantor is, provide evidence around who their investors are, anything associated with the, the business proposition side of this. When we um, were entertained by a presentation by the Moose, they indicated that their business plan at that time was um, similar to that of the Green Bay Packers, a community supported effort. I believe it's fair to say the chair and perhaps others asked them to confirm who their investors were at the time and there didn't appear to be any investors um, associated with this activity. So we want to ensure that if the municipality is going to consider endorsing the event and express an interest for our city to host, that those items are presented in a sound way that gives confidence to the municipality. Okay. Okay, just let's, okay, so business plan. I have a question. Yeah, just financials, confirmation of investors. Wayne? Okay. Wayne, just to clarify, I, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get it clarified just like uh, Councilor Matard. So they have to provide all this, plus they have to, do they, do we post a million dollar bond or do they, like, do we have to post that right away? No. We have to, yeah. Do we have to provide a 12,000 seat stadium, portable stadium? No. Not until we get all this. Okay. Councilor Twill. And then we'll get to Deputy Mayor. Um, again, this is just a, a letter of support to move to the next step to, to uh, put together all the prerequisites that are truly required to host an event of this magnitude. 
That's all it is. And and what what the manager did was illustrated some of those challenges in the resolution, which he's supposed to do, and and he did. He he illustrated them quite accurately. So, you know, I understand the Chamber of Commerce is is is, is interested. I understand now talking or listening to Wayne, you know, University at U, UPEI is is interested, but we have to send a signal that we're open to the idea, that we're, 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 we're willing to explore the possibility of hosting a CFL game here. If we say no, we're not even willing to explore it and entertain it, what kind of a signal is that to the community? You know, where we pride ourselves in hosting events here in the capital city. <coughs> a CFL game is no different. Um, and it wouldn't be just the, CF, the city of Charlottetown uh, working with the uh, with this organization, it'd be the other two levels of government that would come on board, ACOA, there would be investors that would have to come on board as well. But the signal has to come from the capital city. And once we do that, we're going to be pleasantly surprised. I would go on the record and say we're going to be pleasantly surprised at the uh, level of support that uh, we're, we're, we're going to get. But all we're doing here is just sending the message that we would like to entertain and examine that option. And I want to thank Wayne for bringing that other information and putting that in the resolution. So there's no false pretenses here. Here's what we need, here's what's required. Once a resolution is passed, letters sent to the uh, to uh, to CFL and to, to this organization, the city of Charlottetown is willing to entertain hosting a CFL game here. We're the only province in this country yes. that's never held or hosted a CFL game. Okay. Why not? I think we owe it to the island football community and to the citizens of this province. Okay. Deputy Mayor, can you, do you want to ask a question, make a comment, and then I'll go count Councilor Bernard? Yes, please. Um, I'm just wondering, I, I've gone through the entire economic development report and I can't, and I can't see um, a staff report or a staff recommendation. So, can somebody tell me what the staff recommendation is for this resolution? Uh, Councilman McKinnon, do you want to defer it? Uh, yes, you were supposed to defer to Mr. S uh, staff Long. recommendation there, uh, Mr. Wayne Long. Through the chair, Your Worship. So the staff recommendation is the very last paragraph of this resolution um, that the municipality provide a letter of endorsement only once the above items in the paragraph above it are met, where the municipalities provide it with a business plan exclusive of financials, confirmation of investors, and evidence of who will serve as the financial guarantor for the event. Thank you. Clear there, Deputy? Um, just to follow up, but there's no report. There's no staff recommendation. Like we always have a report with a staff recommendation. All we have is a resolution, don't we? Am I missing something? Council McKinnon, do you want to again provide some light on this? Defer this to Mr. Long. Uh, Mr. Long again. Through the chair, your worship, um, staff. Uh, were of the understanding that because it was the presentation came from a, a party beyond uh, the municipality and it was uh, a change to um, the focus on the floor at the time of the committee meeting that the resolution would stand uh, on its own. Okay, so to, to clarify that, this wasn't the resolution that was passed at the committee level. There was no resolution. Okay, so so was the resolution these two pages? No, no, I'm looking at the your worship. Just one second. Can I have a point just, of order here? Yeah, just yep. one second. Councilor McKinnon, was this the resolution that was passed these two pages at committee level? No. Those, those, no. The answer okay. is no. Point of order, there, Deputy Mayor. Yes, um, it's my understanding, and perhaps our CAO can clarify this. Uh, a resolution cannot come to council without a staff report 
and a staff recommendation. We do not have a staff report and we do not have a staff recommendation. Unless I'm missing something, that's my point of order. CAO. Thank you, Worship. So the deputy mayor is correct. Um, I would suggest what we do in this situation is send it back to committee so a staff report can be prepared with a recommendation. Okay, so we need to defer it back to the committee, refer it back to the committee. Chair? Are you in favor of referring it back to the committee? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, if that's the process that we need to follow, then it'll go back to the committee for discussion and uh, bring it back to council. So the seconder, Councillor McAleer, do you want to refer it back to the committee? You're the seconder of the resolution. No, no. Councillor McAleer, did you second this resolution? Yes, I did. Okay. Do you want to refer it back to the committee? Use your mic. Okay. I will process. Yeah. Yes. Okay, we're going to refer it back to committee. I don't think we need the resolution off the floor for that, do we, CAO? They're going to refer to refer back to the standing committee. Do we need a resolution to refer? We're going to refer it back. Okay. Is there another resolution? Number Wait a two? second. That's another another point of order. There what's has the, to be what's a your point of order? What's that? There has to be a resolution to defer because there's a resolution on the floor. No, we're, we, we have to have a resolution. We're to referring defer, it back. We? Deputy Mayor, we're referring it back to the committee. And I just asked the CAO, we can refer it back without, the re without, without a resolution. You've asked, and so it's going back. I wonder. Okay. Okay, second resolution. That was the first. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor McKinnon, seconded by Councillor McAleer. Be it resolved that council support entering into a five-year agreement under the city's tax incentive strategy with both, both HIG LP Management Incorporated, the Arts Hotel, and the Charlottetown Area Development Corporation Bio Alliance Incubator, and that the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Okay, Councilor Twill. Okay. Motion that was advanced by the committee. Okay. So we have a resolution on the floor. Question? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Deputy Mayor Yankov, yay or nay? In favor. Thank you. Just before we go um, your, from your report, on page 377 of the digital document for the farmer's market, um, I know it was a staff uh, decision, but it's, it's now on Facebook that it's moving down to Queen Street. Where is it moving? Uh, Mr. Chair, can you answer that? Is it moving? I don't have con confirmation on that, Your Worship, um, but I do believe that is being moved to the front of Founders Hall. No. No? So that's okay. what I'm hearing. Laura Lee? Your Worship, through the Chair. Um, so staff are currently working with DCI to relocate the market to the green space in front of Founders Hall. There are several items that are still to be resolved at the city level, but that is the site that DCI has requested consideration for. Okay. Did you want to follow up, Councilor Twill? Yeah. Well, well that's, that's all well and good, but that hasn't been entertained by the Parks and Recreation Committee. So you can have all the discussions that you want. That's, that's a venue and facility. That is a mandate of the Parks and Recreation Department and the committee. We haven't had any deliberations whatsoever. So uh, that's why I asked at the Parks and Recreation uh, Committee meeting, uh, we've called for a special meeting of the committee to, enter to entertain that because it was not advanced to the Parks and Recreation Committee. And I, for the, for the life of me, I don't know why. Do you know? It's, all, it's, all, it's always... Yep. Any time a request was made, Council Bernard, you know this. Uh, we've had requests before, and the committee denied it. Yeah. So I, I don't know. You know, I, I keep hearing about silos. Well, I'll tell you what. That's a classical case of silos right there. Okay. The, committee, the committee responsible for that facility being superseded. Well, I don't know who's responsible for that. 
Okay, Councilor Beck. I think judging from some of the email threads earlier, the question that seems to be unanswered, at least in my mind, is does this remain purely at the operational level for a resolution to this? or does it have to come back to council approval? And I guess that's where I, what I would like to know is, um, you know, I, I, I understand the rationale for moving it from Queen Street and that it was put at a council decision back in 2011, 12, 13, and stopped in, what, 2017, I believe it was, there were the agreements. So I guess I'm just trying for us to understand, is this something that, will be dealt with, like it will be something that will say the um, economic development, we'll be working with downtown DCI, this is what we've decided and this is what we're going with, or does it come back to us for a formal presentation and a formal approval at the council level? If that could be well, answered I, No, Councilor, we're not gonna, I just brought it up. What we'll do is we'll leave it with the CAO, with the managers of Parks Recreation, Economic Development, get an answer to it because um, it's it's on social media that it's already moved, and I, I didn't know that. I'll tell you after. Okay, can we move on? Yeah, we're, we're moving it to CAO, the managers of Parks and Recreation and Economic Development, to get a, find a resolution, a path forward, is to come back to committee. Or full council, both. Or, yeah. No, no, just one second. Is there some on, not clear there? Go, go ahead, Councillor Beck. No, no, Councillor Tweel. Just, just one second. Oh, I, I guess my question is, is, is it dealt with at operational and that's where it ends? Or does uh, Wayne and Laurel uh, have their deliberations with downtown Charlottetown, Inc.? They come up with what they think is a reasonable plan, and then they come back to us and talk about it. I'm just trying to yeah. understand the process, yeah. how this works, because originally the downtown market was moved by a resolution, of council. resolution of council. Yeah. And so now we're relocating it, and I'm just trying to understand where we're going forward with this, okay. whether, whether it goes dealt, uh, dealt entirely at the operational level, or is it operational coming back to council. Okay. That's what I just wanted. So I'm just going to repeat what I said. The CAO, the two managers, economic development and parks and recreation will discuss your issue and come back to council, whether through an email or with a meeting itself. Council McKinnon. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Laurel would like a time to respond to Council Beck's uh, question. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through the chair, Council Beck, there has been some confusion on this item. Um, the confusion appears to lie in the fact that initially when the market began in 2010, it was dealt with under the pedestrian mall bylaw in planning. So um, from 2010, 11, 12, council voted annually to allow the market to take place. And then from 2013 through 2017, it was dealt with under a five-year agreement. The last resolution that council passed was 10 years ago in 2014. And since that time, there doesn't appear to have been any council involvement in the continuation of the market. The way that the market had been operating doesn't match the last five year agreement. It was much larger than that agreement permitted. So it seems like at some point in time, the market transitioned from being treated as a pedestrian mall agreement to an event. So typically, events are dealt with operationally unless a variance is required under the zoning and development bylaw, if there's a financial guarantor requirement from the city corporation, or if we're looking for funding outside of the budget process. Outside of those situations, it tends to be dealt with entirely at the operational level. Um, so that's where the confusion came about in the first place. That's how the letter went to DCI in the first place. And once that letter was issued and then shared with uh, councillors who were impacted, that's when it was flagged, should that item have come to council. Um, since that time and since we had our last committee meeting, DCI has indicated that they are not interested in returning to Queen Street given the challenges that emergency services have flagged. 
that they were looking to relocate. Uh, Port Charlottetown did ask them to consider moving down in front of Founders Hall, recognizing that that is city property. Um, all involved departments reviewed that request on a very tight turnaround, recognizing that we are mostly the middle of April right now, so they are getting close to the start time for the market, and it appears to be a viable option. Once again, after the fact, Councillor Tweel did um, indicate that he felt that that should have been an item discussed at the Parks and Recreation Committee. I'm not a member of that committee, so I'm not privy to what typically would go there, but there has been some confusion over is this an operational item or does council need to be involved? Perhaps the CIO does have something further to add to that, but that's kind of where things are at right now. Yeah. Okay, CIO, did you want to say a comment? And then Councillor Tweedle and then Councillor Beck. Well, thank you, Worship. So this wasn't an agenda item, um, but to be clear, I'd, part of the struggle, and it's not just this topic, we have a lot of undocumented processes uh, in the line between operations and governance is unclear in a lot of places. Uh, so that's some work that we need to do. Uh, we do have an education session coming up with someone who's going to come in and talk about this. And I think from there, naturally, uh, there could be some work in further defining where this is. So there is less confusion all around about whose role is what in these different processes. Yeah, But just to add to that, council can make a decision, like it did back in 2010, to close down a street, to make it available for the farmer's market. So this can get back to council. It doesn't mean it just rests in one part of the organization or municipal government. It can come back here. I'm going to ask Councilor Twill, I know we can open this up all night. This is your last time. What do you want to say about it? You're the dean of uh, the chamber. Give us some background. Well, you, you brought it up, Mr. Mayor. I did, because yeah, it's in the minutes. Up. You brought it up. Yeah. And, you know, we, we, the CAO talks about, you know, we need to look at our practices and, and there's confusion. Well, I can tell you there's never been any confusion of Parks and Recreation. Whenever a request has been made uh, for the usage of any of the Parks and Recreation venues, particularly for business purposes, it starts off with the Parks and Recreation manager, puts it on the agenda, comes to the committee, and the committee has deliberations. That has been the practice. There's never been any confusion. Everyone understands it perfectly, so I don't know why there, there is confusion. There's never been any confusion uh, previously. So, you know, I, th I think we've got to be careful here to say that nobody knows what's doing or what's operational. That's not operational. Council's not involved. They are involved. What committee it's vented through. I, I, I see that as a bunch of rhetoric. Yeah. Okay? It's pretty clear to me. You can ask Councillor Bernard any one of these uh, request, it all depends on who's responsible, what department is responsible, then it's vented through the committee, and then it goes from there. Recommend <coughs> excuse me, a recommendation comes to council. So uh, it's amazing to me that probably uh, one of your most important committees here in the city when it comes to looking at uh, where that facility is supposed to go, and I want you to know too, I got an email today from, from, from a business person that really likes Queen Street and I can tell you, the people he's talking to, they're really upset with the relocation off of Queen Street. Okay. Really upset. Thank you. So uh, there's no confusion. Yep. So oh. I just want to eliminate that. To my mind, that's a red herring. Yeah. Thank you. Council Bernard, Council Beck. Thank you, Worship. I just want to add, I, I know uh, some emails were going around, and I wasn't happy either. But I think at the end of the day, um, for us as elected officials, and it was always something to do with the parks. If it was an unusual request, it would always go to the committee for, for a recommendation. Um, this one here bothered a lot of us, I think, because if, for example, Councilor Duran just woke up one day and, and found out that the farmer's market is in Centennial Park, or you know, I wake up and find out that it's an out in Hillsborough Park that's just set up 20 or 30 shops out, out in the park without any knowledge of it or with any, without any approval. I think that's, that's, that's why we got upset over staff making that decision. Here's where it's going, and congratulations. Yeah. Whereas we never had any discussion, we never had any, any decision making where it always does. But whenever, you know, if, if, if someone wants to come in and, and use a field for Frisbee tournament or whatever, that would go through the management, the management would approve it. It doesn't have to go to the council. But an unusual request like this, 
has traditionally always come to council for discussion. A recommendation been made by the committee to come to council whether we want to allow it or not. Queen Street, Queen Street's always been, you, you, you're closing a street. So that street closure bylaw comes into effect, you always have to pass it. But I think on this one, and it sounds like it will get ironed out, but, but you know, I don't think anybody wants to wake up and, and find out there's something going on that, that the residents aren't happy about and we had no say in it. So I think that's why it needs to go to the proper committee to be dealt with with a recommendation to council. Council Beck. Uh, just thank you for answering my question, Laurel. Councilor McAleer. Yeah, um, thank you, Mayor Brown. I just, just, I guess, uh, like to make some general comments or my own personal observations. I, I, I sit on, I sit on the DCI board as the, as the city rep, and uh, you know this problem or this issue with the farmers market. Um, I've described it and I've said it to her. At, uh, said it, said this at the, uh, at their board. This is a good problem. Um, this, uh, this is something that. Uh, was started in partnership with DCI and in the city back whenever 2010 and it started at one block went to two went to three uh, you know the vendor the vendor support you know was it, you know was increased and um, uh, so much so that DCI has done a good job from what I understand with with uh, skinny resources of uh, quarterbacking this thing but um, you know there's uh, evident that there were some challenges uh, that uh, not the least of which was safety and Queen Street and what have you. Um, so, um, so there was a, uh, obviously a decision made. Uh, I don't know if the uh, if the uh, Founders Hall is going to be uh, you know going to work out in the end or whatever. You know, I hope it does for the uh, for the continuity of this thing. But um, you know, and as for Queen Street, you know, I'm no um, I'm no expert on where these things are best held, but. Um, and um, I know at the board, DC board meeting the other day, uh, president of the board, Steve Dunn, made the comment. And again, um, at the risk here, just saying, you know, farmers markets, he said, I can't think of any major downtown uh, street in Atlantic Canada where there's a farmers market on, you know, you know, on the main, uh, on the main artery through the city, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, even in some Toronto and some other centers. So, um, you know, I don't know what the reset is, um, but I'd like to think with, um, you know, uh, going forward, uh, the Founders Hall may not be the long-term thing. Uh, who knows what the event grounds and all that can bring, but um, again, it's, uh, you know, it's a good problem, and uh, I think the staff uh, reacted. I support uh, what was done in terms of this uh, resolution, that or, that or no market. Uh, anyway, it wasn't, okay. uh, wasn't an option as far as I was concerned. Thank you. Anyway, some good questions, debate on this, and uh, I don't think it's over yet because I think the council response for Parks and Recreation feels that that is an issue that should have went through his standing committee, supported by Councilor Bernard, a former chair of Parks and Recreation. So we'll let the administrators talk with some of the councillors that have raised concerns. Okay, let's go to Environment and Sustainability, Councillor Terry Bernard. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Your Worship, the uh, Environment and Sustainability Committee met on March the 25th. Draft meetings were in your package. And uh, we do have one resolution for council consideration, Your Worship. Um, and I do have some, uh, <clears throat> some highlights, Your Worship. That I, like. I know there's a, lot of, there's a lot in the minutes there, so I, I have some highlights I'd like to pass on to council and yourself. Um, environment sustainability recently updated the community greenhouse gas or uh, inventory using data from 2015 until 2022. This data will now be collected on an annual basis to better track Charlottetown's emissions. Uh, overall, Charlottetown's annual greenhouse gas emissions have increased, your worship, by 3.7 percent from 2015, demonstrating the ongoing need for more dedicated efforts to reduce energy in Charlottetown. Having noted with that, the population has increased quite a bit in Hound too. So something that we got to continue to work on to get our greenhouse gases down, Your Worship. Uh, work towards climate action plan for Charlottetown continues. The city staff have released a, a future climate projections report, which will inform 
the specific actions in the plan. Staff are also undertaking extensive engagement to better understand community concerns and priorities. This is being done through working groups composed of experts and key collaborators, as well as a wider public engagement in partnership with five community organizations. A draft plan is anticipated to be released in the fall of 2024. So, uh, Your Worship, we look, we look forward to that. That will be a, a, guiding, a guiding document for us. Um, they can also stay up to date in progress towards the Climate Action Plan, Your Worship, at uh, charlottetownhall.ca slash climate action. So if anybody wants to, to follow along, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, the transit system has transitioned to new technology, resulting in better service for the same cost in the municipality, Your Worship. This will be good news. Uh, it includes reliable Wi-Fi on board all buses, better travel planning, real-time data is now shown on common apps like Google Maps and Transit, as well as the t3.ca website. Uh, and Your Worship, the only other thing is, uh, and I know we'd like to get the greenhouse gas emissions down, so when I spoke a little bit of this last, uh, last month, um, I know the CAO would like to follow protocol here, so uh, we'll ask for a notice of motion, and it's to bring a resolution to councils to support the province, Your Worship, the provincial government in launching a study uh, to access the, to assess the feasibility and benefits of pos the possibility of converting some or all maritime electric to a, to a crown corporation uh, to better control electricity rates for all islanders. I think I touched on that last month, the worship, and we did talk about it at our committee. Um, but uh, I, I think just to follow protocol, we'll, we'll do the notice of motion, send back to committee, and uh, get the report to council of why we want to support that. Uh, but it makes a lot of sense if we can, you know, we, we see a lot of the switch program, we see a lot of the programs the province is offering to get people off fossil fuels. Um, and then we see on the other side of it, the electricity rates go up, you know, 9, possibly 12% year over year. Uh, so I, uh, I'm looking for, uh, I think we should support the problems in that study to see where that goes. If, anything, if there's any way we can save our islanders on electricity rates, then uh, this, is the, this is possibly one of them. So other than that, Your Worship, if there's any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Okay. Do I want to go with the resolution? Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Bernard, seconded by Councillor McKinnon. Be it resolved that the City of Charlottetown join Quest Canada's Net Zero Communities Accelerator Program at a cost of $6,000 and that this be expensed from the Environment and Sustainability Department's 2023-2024 operational budget. And further, that the Mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Councilor Bernard, do you want to speak to it? I do. For those that don't know you, so I just want to read this off. The Quest Canada's Net Zero Communities Exhilarator Program. It aims to equip participating communities with the knowledge necessary to develop and continuously implement climate mitigation plans. The program provides a suite of resources and guidance, enabling communities to attain the economic, environmental, and social benefits associated with their greenhouse gas reduction goals. So this just goes towards all the plans we're trying to get to, to uh, get our greenhouse gases emissions down. Okay, thank you. Councillor Peck. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> nothing to do with really uh, the NEDS, uh, the program or anything, but why are we bringing a $6,000 item for council approval. Um, just, I think, Norm, don't we have a threshold of $25,000 or something like that? Yeah. Just, and, and again, I, I don't have any issue with the request. I'm just wondering why we're bringing a $6,000 request. Can you stand up? Okay. okay. I'm going to take, sta take a stand up. I have a good question. Uh, but I think more so just to give the information out of the Quest Canada and, and, the, and the relationship that the City of Charlotte yeah. is going to engage in. It's more, it's more of that than it is the cost. More information. Yeah. It's a PR move. Public relations. Yeah, okay. But we often get reports for You're information right. purpose only. So I guess yeah. I think might have, if we could do that, just give us the information. I agree. It's good news. It's a worthwhile project. I'm not debating the merits of the project or anything like that. I'm just thinking we're making a resolution on something that really we don't have to be un making unless, a resolution uh, un on. Unless, Council, there's something I don't know. I don't know, Jessica, is there another reason that I'm missing? Yeah. Um, 
through you, Chair. So uh, a lot of times these agencies will request a council resolution to say that they support us participating in the program, program and providing funding for that. So I'm thinking that might have been the case. Um, I can't okay. say 100%, but that's usually okay. pretty common. Yeah, it's, PR. You, it's public relations for all of us. Questions, Questions called. All those in favor? Okay. Deputy Mayor Yankoff? In favor. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like Cuban. Okay. Can we move on to strategic priorities, communication, and intergovernmental cooperation? Councillor Norman Beck. So the strategic priorities, communications, and intergovernmental cooperation committee did not meet since the last meeting. We were victim of budget cut meetings <laughs> and budget meetings, so we get cut. We uh, anyway, we are meeting tomorrow, and uh, just one thing I do, so we don't have any resolutions for you. I do want to just make you aware that um, we have had the uh, I can't remember if it was one, a few meetings ago we talked about. Um, soliciting ideas for possible further exploration or stuff that might be addressed in educational sessions or whatever it might be. I'm going to be sending you out uh, an email to solicit that stuff and uh, it'll, you can just forward it back through me, um, any ideas that we have. Just kind of a follow-up to what we discussed here a while ago, but I'll outline that all in the uh, in information coming out. So you can just uh, funnel it all through me and we'll eventually take the feedback and bring it back through committee following that. So anything else, uh, please fire away and I'll do my best to answer. Councilor Bernard. Uh, I just wanted to know, Councilor Beck, if there was any movement on uh, the discussion we had last month about doing up the job descriptions for the public for elected officials that I had asked to go back to your committee to discuss, come up with a job description. Uh, I think what, there's some questioning over here. So what Councillor Bernard's referring to is the uh, uh, recommendations that come out from the Remuneration Allowances Commission, those extra points of 3 to 11. Uh, I think there was eight points or something like that that were uh, brought forth. And at that meeting, Councillor Bernard had questioned whether there might be merit in terms of putting job descriptions out for uh, councillors. And um, the consensus was, I didn't really go back to the committee, Councillor Bernard, because my feeling was, or what I got from the feedback from Council was that we're not addressing any of those issues, so they were all kind of put to bed. So I didn't do any, we didn't do anything, take it back to the committee for further discussion. Um, but again, I, I guess if they're, uh, um, I guess there's always an avenue possible for, for that to happen, but since it came up under the collective of those uh, recommendations, it was decided, or the collective consensus was that we don't address any of those. Um, term limits. Um, job description. What was it? Did you say job description? Did uh, someone? Yeah, job description. There's a whole bunch of other things yeah. are in there. The ones that were not uh, monetarily related, so. Yeah. To your answer, uh, we didn't do anything because I, I thought that was the respective wishes of council. Yeah. To not well, do my job description for elected official is to get elected and then get reelected. Pretty simple. Council Bernard. Yeah, okay, so, there, and, and he's right, there was a zero date and, and, and we, were off to, if we were asked if there was any that we wanted to have reviewed and I guess for me, I'm standing up saying yes, I'd like number three reviewed. Uh, if we can, because it, it, it serves a purpose, it serves more than one purpose, so. So the, again, I'm just trying to follow the procedure. Would that have to be a notice of motion to direct it back to committee or? Just take it back we, to committee. What are we looking for? Just take it back and explore okay. that, just have that discussion at the committee level? Yeah. Okay. Explore. Job description for counselor. Councilor Bernard, look, he's going to take it back to committee. Again, elect it, re-elect it. It's pretty simple. New business. Do you want to read the resolution? No, no business. 
Uh, no, sorry, sorry. We have new business one resolution. It's, it's right at the bottom, 6.11. It's an appointment to the Affordable Housing yeah. Advisory Committee. Okay. And the bio is there. Ryan Cook. I know, I know Ryan. Yeah, lives in your district. <laughs> need a mover? I need a mover and a second. Okay, Councilor McAleer, do you want to move that? <laughs> Councilor McAleer, move it there. He's going to send it over to you. Sign it. No, get them, to, get them to sign it first. Okay, who's going to be your uh, Councilor, Councilor Bernard. <laughs> well, by, by coincidence, Ryan Cook is in the house. Mr. Cook is down at the back there. Welcome there, Ryan. Mechanical engineer with, uh, with uh, Coles Associates. No, she's going to just, yeah, she's going to just... Moved by Councillor McAleer, seconded by Councillor Bernard. Be it resolved that effective immediately and as recommended by His Worship, Mayor Philip Brown, Ryan Cook be appointed to the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee. Questions called? All those in favor? Okay. Deputy Mayor, yay or nay? In favor. 10 0. Okay. So we have to go into a closed session there, Councillor Twill. Uh, you're all right with that? Okay. Okay. Motion to move. <laughs> motion to move into a closed session as per section, per, per, as per section 119, subsection 1B and E of the Municipal Government Act of Prince Edward Island. B, information revealed or received in confidence, which, if disclosed, would likely be preju prejudicial prejudicial to the municipality or parties involved, land negotiations, E, a matter still under consideration on which the council has not yet publicly announced a decision and about which discussion in public would likely prejudice the, uh, our, uh, prejudice the municipality's ability to carry out its negotiations, host an agreement. All those in favor? Aye. Moved by Councillor, Councillor McLair, second by Councillor. Oh no, who was moved? Moved by Councillor Mac. Moved by Councillor Bernard, second by Councillor McLair. All in favor? Okay. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. You in favor?
Okay. I always feel better, Mitchell. Thank you. Okay. So in the closed session, we did come to a resolution. Do we have a resolution there, CAO Eleanor? Um, we're back in open session, and she's going to read the resolution. Thank you, Worship. And there'll be a copy of the report attached in the, the minutes as well. Moved by Councillor McKinnon, seconded by um, Councillor McLear. Be it resolved that Council enter into an agreement with a rights holder of a soon-to-be-announced event in the amount of $30,000, recently approved as part of the 2024-2025 operating operational budget, and that the Mayor and CAO be authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Question. Questions called? All those in favor? Deputy Mayor? In favor. And enjoy yourself, Deputy Mayor. We're going to sign up. Uh, Motors to, to adjourn. Councilor Patert, Councilor Ramsey, all done. Thank you kindly. 10-0. Bye, all.